Wake up, gamers, because you're listening to the Big Think Dimension with Dan and Bob Video Games. Crispy Critters. Chris Wolfhart. Kari at 2024. And, and Dr. Agro. Bless the Burov and his metal face. Bless the coming and going of him. May his he, passage cleanse the world. Here on Gigaboots. I thought ours was bad, and then I got sucker punched twice by their <laughs> intros. <laughs> Anyways, hello everyone. Welcome to Big Think Dimension number 211. Yuji Naka's signed confession. Um, we uh, we we have we have some things to talk about. We played some video games. For example, have you all heard of Babylon's Fall? It fell. Yeah, I'm sure. If you knew, yeah, it fell. Uh, oh boy, that game. The opening of that game really sells itself as like I am a games as a service game. There is no money here. There's nothing to see. These are just rooms that you move between <laughs> rooms that are less rooms, more containment cube zones that you have combat in that do nothing. And then we play past the first betas levels mm -hmm. and it starts having levels. Yeah, the levels g get weirdly more designed. It was bizarre. This was not on my bingo card. <laughs> This What's was nowhere on my. Them? I don't know. Yeah, they really front loaded. Like, I wrote that. I wrote that game off entirely because of that that beta. Yeah. Why would you hide that there was actual content in the game? I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, the opening of that game is so bare bones with so little going on, and then as you play further into it for a bit, it just gets more and more money. I don't know why people are saying Chris's audio is messed up. One moment. Hey, Chris, say a bunch of words. I'm going to listen back on my phone to see if I can figure out the mystery, and then we'll just restart. Okay, this. I'm saying a bunch of words. These are a bunch of words. Has something gone wrong, terribly wrong somewhere? I don't think they have. Yeah, I don't know. This sounds perfectly fine to me. Weird. Well, if it's a problem, we'll find out and fix it in time for next week. <laughs> Seemed okay to me. Anyways. Um, that game also keeps unlocking mechanics as you go the entire way for like nine hours. Yeah, like, what was it? Five hours in, they're like, elemental weapons and attacks exist. They still didn't give me those, but mm. they told me about them and it <laughs> acted like it would be real. <laughs> and then we beat the vain game and it's like, hey, um, here's how you used your coffin powers. That thing that's on your back this entire game. Mm hmm. You can use that now. Or like, thank you. No, I guess that wasn't when we fully beat it. That was like eight hours in or something. It was ludicrous. Really? And, and uh, that was a mechanic so you could do like a finisher move kind of like Metal Gear Rising when you finish off an enemy and then get some health back mm -hmm. but it wasn't as good as that but it was at least like there it was approaching that yeah yeah and it was like this feels like it should have been there early like it's not it's not hard to do it's literally hit this button while the enemy is doing a sawing animation right which is something you have you see a hundred thousand times before then obviously right yeah obviously you grind through thousands of enemies throughout the game um, yeah, it's really weird. Uh, I don't know what else to say about that game. I'll let Bob say his whole spiel, but I will say after nine hours, it was nice that the game gave us anything. By anything, I mean a giant golden woman with a nice ass. <laughs> that is the final <laughs> boss of that game, by the way. Yeah, there's two I... actually cool boss fights. That's one of them. Okay, real quick. How neat is it that we can spoil the shit out of Bob Babylon's Fall and it doesn't matter anymore because it's gone? Right, you can't experience it yourself anymore, guys. I'm sorry. This is it. That It's gone now. You had time. But Square Enix did everything in their power to scare you away. Mm -hmm. What? Uh <laughs> what the fuck is what what is with Square Enix and releasing games in the first quarter where you have like giant golden idols as the final boss? 
Oh, was that also Stranger of Paradise or something? No, that's also Forspoken. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm just looking at this thing and I'm like, this looks like if the thing at the end of Forspoken had a design. Yeah, I was like, it looked so much nicer than the Forspoken thing. I didn't even connect those dots, but for sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that, that would happen. Thank you for uh, Justice Agbos for giving us the copy we played and for helping us through this game. There's no way we would have beaten that on one stream if he didn't come in and provide his overlevel character. Yeah, that's true. By the way, I figured out the issue and it's solved now. So they only had to deal with a few minutes of our co-host sounding a little strange. Beautiful. You know, our recording before we went live, they sounded perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. I figured out exactly what it was. But yeah, Justice Ag helped us out with the uh, great thumbnail that I'm looking at the creator character in and I'm like, yeah, that is how that game looks, but this looks like a 7th gen video game. So then I post the <laughs> thumbnail and people go, what is this fucking... Si I think it was uh, Lady Zeon who was just like, that game doesn't actually look like this 7th gen ass character you're sticking in this thumbnail, right? And I'm like, I'm glad Zeon's on the same fucking page as me. <laughs> <laughs> right? As I just go, really? This is... All right. All right. Yeah, for people who don't know and now never will... <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Babylon's Fall has probably the worst character creator ever. It is up there. It is real. It felt awful because people were like, make Jin Kari and just like Chris has been doing it's the same row. And I'm like, I, we, there aren't tools here to do that. Yeah, there's I'm basically sorry. no tools. Also, none of these voices are <laughs> Troy Baker as far as I know. Yeah, what's the point? What's the point with if it's not, if, you're, if you don't have Troy Baker <laughs> saying hideous lines over and over again? Yeah, the, the, Sport. They don't even bother having English like voice lines for your main character. He still just has Japanese grunts, and they don't give him a voice ever. Really? Yeah. I didn't even. I didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. I just saw we had a bunch of options. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Babylon's fall. That shouldn't have happened. No. It's really weird because they invent small stories for the game to be about. Like imagine Xenoblade super small side quests that are supposed to have heart but they don't have heart because they didn't write it well, but it's <laughs> shaped like that. And that's the plot of the whole game until the very end where they MacGuffin a sort of like, this was a thing that was happening all along player. Once again, I don't need to worry about spoiling it, but they're like that voice that has been talking to you the whole time is the voice of eternity because the dream is all that there ever as it will be or whatever. And this woman that might be that guy's daughter unclear is going to come out in the ending to save. And I'm like, what? What is what? Re what? Yeah, trying to have connections to that internal voice of yours is so hap like loosely done. I think that yeah. she comes up really early yeah, yeah like in the opening cutscene, which we didn't show like right. we, it didn't play that when we started a new character for some reason <laughs> right for some reason um <laughs> and then again like after six hours and then in the final finale they're like oh this is important i'm like i don't care because my main character isn't a character mm -hmm. and this voice in his head doesn't mean anything <laughs> yeah we we really <sighs> seventh gen had a lot of stupid ideas Mm -hmm. but letting you make a character and then just being like, no, we just gave him a voice and a personality. You just get to decide how they look mm -hmm. is not a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It does seem like a lot of the Japanese companies approach it. Like I see this from this and from Neo and everything else Team Ninja does. Like, well, Long has this exact same problem of uh, you get to customize the character and that means they don't have a voice and they never interact in cutscenes. And it's like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Most just, just, to do do a male and a just do a male and a female voice and people will be fine with that. Yeah. You don't need to give them dialogue options. You don't need to have them not talk so that you don't interfere whatever weird image they have. I it's need, fine. People I, just like seeing the character they made do things. In fact, they might like that more. I need uh -huh. 36 voices that say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's literally how it feels. I, <laughs> considering how underpaid voice actors are, you really have no fucking reason. Yeah, right? no, it's true. I was truly shocked how little voice actors are paid. And I'm like, wait, then what's the excuse? I need to fully customize my man who yells crispy critters. <laughs> that would be so good if in Babylon's Fall, every voice you selected, they just go crispy critters. Crispy critters. Crispy critters. <laughs> That's how you choose the, the voice for the entire game. Yeah. 
the uh, the rpg mechanics in this are such a mess yeah yeah that like they have a ton of stats on every piece of equipment it's like the only one that matters is the big number yeah okay so you need to understand there's there's a number and it's just sort of floating there it's not a huge number on the screen even uh-huh it's just the important number because there are all these stats and some of our early equipment maxed out the stats yes they were just like what's up bitch you got maximum stamina or whatever it was mm -hmm. we're like okay but but do we just stick with this forever I, and i'm sitting there and i'm like I feel like that one number, that one number up there is the only number that matters. And we had that immediately confirmed by chat. And I'm like, this yes. sucks. Yeah, no, was, it's was just that like, number labeled or was it just like a light level? It was, it, 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 was, it, it didn't have a label. It didn't have, yeah, I think it's, it's just it's, floating it, in the fucking UI. It's the item level, but it doesn't say that. Yeah, it so doesn't it, it, say it, item it, level. It's just a number that is somewhere on the sheet about the item. So yeah, it is their light level. <laughs> like it's exactly that. Um, which with the weapons is even more infuriating because a lot of times the damage value of the weapon doesn't even go up, but the level does. And that's important because if the enemy out levels you by uh -huh. a certain amount, your weapon, even if it still ha has a really high attack damage number, will do Boo. no damage. Yeah, that, that's really common in these kind of games and in MMOs too. Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. Like that, you should never make a game like that. Like, it, I, it, we, it doesn't, that, that kind of shit can be like obfuscated by like RPG mechanics, but if you're making an action type game, no, never, ever, ever. Yeah, I ha literally had some pistols because uh, they're just regular guns in this game mm -hmm. that could mulch enemies up until this one level. And then I went to the next stage and it did one damage after it was doing 300 to 400 damage of the previous. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah it was crazy. They so, did a lot. Uh, I truly am shocked there's this much game in here, though. Yeah. Because they had, like, cool... Like, it started getting sort of Strangers of, Par Strangers of Paradise Future Zone near the end, where it's just like, you're... In Once again, we don't have to worry about spoiling it. The game's dead. Mm-hmm. So, um, Babylon's Fall ends up being a game about how you crack a hole in the sky and then go, oh, shit, we're living in a fake medieval society while super, like, privileged people live up there yeah they live in their elysium it they're literally called elysium uh so you need to travel up there to shut down the system because the blue sun uh is giving everyone the blue plague and mm -hmm. you're certain that that turning that off turning off that blue sun is going to stop that and uh then a slug pukes up, pukes up a giant golden hot lady <laughs> and that's that's the game but the later parts do look a lot like uh, Stranger of Paradise Future Zones. It's really crazy. Yeah, when you go up into that Elysium Future Society, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Like, it seems like that has better art direction than the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, especially the first opening shit that they stuck in that first beta. Yeah. But all of the game has better art direction than that. That's literally the saddest looking part of that game. Also, just as eggs in chat that confirmed what was it. Pretty sure all the guys in Elysium are dead or something. Yeah, but it seems yeah. like Elysium is a... They progressed to the point of making robots, and then the robot killed all of them. <laughs> right, but that's kind of like swept under the carpet. They're right. like, don't worry about that. Yeah, it's they're like they, they're so the far road. above us in advance. It's like, dude, they're all dead. Yeah, no one's they up don't there. Have even, those robots don't even seem conscious. They seem to be maintaining the status quo of killing everyone. Yeah. <laughs> the system's really efficient when you remove the human element. Right? Um, so that game, the setting and a bunch of other things could be cool. Yeah. If this wasn't turned into a terrible service game, right? It could have been cool. Yes. And also, if anyone got a leash on them and was like, "Don't do this painterly stuff. Make your game look like a video game instead right. of this goo." Because here's the thing: they have this weird shader filter thing. They put a certain distance out from the player, and in the, in the patches, they apparently increased the distance they mm -hmm. put it out for the player. But it basically makes the background sort of melt. And when you do that on top of temporal anti-aliasing, it just looks horrible. Like maybe this would have worked on the PS2 where we didn't put so many post layers on images. Right, maybe. But here it just looked terrible. So they literally pushed back that that zone at which it, it all has this painterly effect. Did you have anything else? Not really. Okay. I, those two bosses are pretty cool. I would go look at those on YouTube. That there's like I think he's called the Dragon Knight. Yeah. And then the the final boss. So that's yeah. easy to find. Yeah. Those no, were actually like wow. 
This looks cool. Yeah, it looks cool, and it's kind of structured like a boss fight. Yeah. Weird. Bizarre. What's that doing in this game? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, what we're trying to say is uh, that that game probably should have won Budget Dimension of the Year last year, but we didn't. Also, even before Justice Egg joined us, uh huh. The game got the enemies get less damage spongy as we went. Yeah, you need to understand the hardest part of Babylon's Fall is probably the opening. <laughs> yeah, like that first beta area is the worst part of that game. It takes like 20 to 22 <laughs> minutes of swinging at enemies to kill them. 20 to 22 hits mm -hmm. of swinging at these enemies to kill them. And then by, I don't know, mission four, you're killing them in five hits. Right. It's like, why? How did you balance it like they this? They didn't. I thought you were going to say the hardest part is staying awake. <laughs> Bob, Babylon sleep. <laughs> New stream redemption. Bob goes to sleep. Just pulls up a blanket. So I've been hearing a lot of negativity about this game. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to, to make it very clear going uh -huh. forward that since not a lot of people played it and it is now impossible to go back and play it, I've decided that that game was in fact an underrated, <sighs> brilliant masterpiece that you guys just didn't understand and lack the skill to adequately operate. Just like Sonic CD. <laughs> Thank you, Agro. Oh, fuck you, Agro. <laughs> I like the fair and balanced opinions we have on this show. <laughs> They're definitely supported by real thoughts. Um... Uh, yeah, so at one point during the stream, uh, I lost my mind and shaved off my beard. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a lot to, to deal with Bob just bashing through countless enemies. Mm -hmm. And while the levels were way better than I expected, it still wasn't enough. So I shaved off my beard. Uh, that was a thing. And then, and then I started getting really crazy and started deep frying the video, the gameplay, and our audio and putting reverb, pounds of reverb on our voices. It was a good stream. It was a good stream. It was very entertaining. I highly recommend people go check that out. You know when it starts because I shave my beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's so when you don't lose his mind. If you're clicking through the VOD, just look for when the beard disappears and the madness begins. Let chat vote on whether or not we should make the game sharper. <laughs> Which was me just putting layer after layer of sharpening filter. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's so hard to look at. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't have to play it while doing that. This is great because it was decimating the stream quality because they, they were trying to encode it. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're streaming it out to the internet. And at some point, the encoder's like, there's so much noise. Because <laughs> we have sharpening artifacts on sharpening artifacts. It was really good. It was really good. Anyway, uh, that was our Sunday stream. And that was a great time. You know what was a better time, though? Mm. A way better time was our Friday stream where we played Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. We did a full playthrough of a VR game in one stream. That was, that was quite the accomplishment. And... Much much like a lot of people who are looking at VR things and either don't have VR or just don't buy a lot of VR games, I too thought that game, like a lot of other VR games, was going to be an experience thing and less of a whole-ass video game. Uh -huh. But just like Horizon, that's a whole-ass video game in there. It's There are levels. Yeah, there are levels. And you, can, you can upgrade stuff and all sorts of things. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> genuinely a lot of what you expect in a modern video game but in like not an open world mm -hmm. and in vr it's real weird uh i said this on twitter i'll say it here the worst part of that game is the side stories because they are either hit or really miss <laughs> like completely 100 percent off this is terrible yeah i so, think there's only one of them that's just terrible which there are only three total yeah were there only three? Because there's robot, uh, initial thing, and then trading your Padawan. Yeah. Okay, so there yeah, wasn't a fourth a, one I I'm missing. I, I don't the IG-88 thing seemed cool from, because, you know, if you're into Star Wars, I guess you're popping already, but... Right. Like, the thought of playing as IG-88 was probably cooler than that section. Like, when I actually started playing, I was like, this is neat, but I don't like but, as much as the regular game. But play. at the same time, it's pretty cool to have the knockdown doors mechanic. Yes. That conceptually... Like, I'm, I am I go to the grocery store to do, like, a drink run real quick during the segment, but Bob is just like, there's this person that IG-88, this literal kill bot is going after, 
and this guy's just smug and shitty and bob's like he's being smug to a kill bot <laughs> Who does that? Yeah, it's like, well, what are you getting out of this? I'm just losing it. It's like, what are you going to do? Shoot me? Yes! <laughs> All he has are arms that end in guns. Right! <laughs> His arms do two things. Knock the fuck down doors and shoot motherfuckers. Guess which one of these two you are. Uh, But yeah, so the real problem with science stories is you get you get you know you as a padawan and yoda in this dark evil part of the jedi force energy spectrum in this weird excursion you yeah, get it's to like go a, experience an evil that. temple yeah an evil temple and that's funny and whatnot but then you get the ig88 thing which is cool and then you get the training your padawan to use the force to stack things and that just does not control. I was probably the best at it in the room. And even I'm like, this should not have shipped. Yeah. The, I don't understand. The rest of that game feels great. And they just done yeah. amazing things with the VR controllers. Mm -hmm. And then that's like from another world. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it felt way better controlling um, the, almost the same exact kind of thing in VR one and dreams. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the game dreams by PlayStation absolutely has much better feel for moving things into 3d space with the force than that did that was truly terrible that's the down moment of the entire stream if you're watching the vod just fucking skip it because we let everyone in the room try to fucking work this horrible machine yeah because I, I did terrible. it first and there's they like tosh and dan wouldn't believe we're me. just losing it <laughs> it's funny as shit and then Tosh lines up, and then Tosh can't get it either. And then I line up, and I get it on what was my second try for the trial you were stuck on. And then the, the very next one, it took me more tries, because they're like, do this piece at an angle. And I'm like, game, I can't rotate the pieces. All I can do is move it in an X, Y, Z. I, can't, I don't have rotate as a function. You didn't give that to me, the player. So I have to move it there and pray the game rotates it in time mm -hmm. to lock that piece in, and this whole thing's timed. So if you don't stack them in time, it just pff, failed. Anyway, if you don't make the first drink that the guy at, at, at the bar, at the cantina wants, you don't do any of the side stories. And I'm absolutely willing to just never do those again because they end in that. Yeah, I would honestly like beat the game and then do them because right. then you can just stop in the middle. Yeah. And I actually did start a second playthrough of this game because and now we're going to describe the rest of the game, the good part. You're, you're a badass who gets to carry up to six guns around, dual-wielding, shooting motherfuckers like the First Order and shit. Uh, you get stormtrooper guns and other shit. You can pick up a fucking sledgehammer and beat them to death. You can <laughs> oh, beat no. stormtroopers to death with a sledgehammer in this game. And since it's a VR game and they want to have movement options for people who get motion sick, you can teleport. So there is a good bit of that stream where I'm just cackling wildly, teleporting around with a sledgehammer and beating <laughs> motherfuckers to death. That, that, is a, that, reminds me of, that reminds me of our old discussion about... I forget how it started. It was on some Fallen Order content where we just we just landed on... <laughs> beating stormtroopers with a mag light yes <laughs> this is that experience finally it's so good because as the enemy dialogue is just like there's a a droid report repairer out here and it's lighting us up and i'm like they don't know i can teleport <laughs> And I'm just like, click, 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 bam, in the back of the head. And the other one's like, oh, my God. I, I was talking about how we need the, the sound effect for teleporting like it's bleach. Yes. <laughs> this is <laughs> just like, shh, shh, shh. yes, <laughs> that's how it feels, too, because once again, you're in VR. So you don't even necessarily need to turn yourself at them with the controls. You just teleport three times and you're now behind them and just spin a 180 and crack the motherfucker in the back of the skull. <laughs> It's a great experience. It's so good. Um, there's there they have good guns, which is really important too. Mm -hmm. Where you have this insanely good charge shot gun that could do a lot of damage, but it has to charge. You have the thing that sort of looks like Han's pistol. You yeah, know, yeah, the old fashioned one. That's a magnum in this game. If you shoot a motherfucker with it, they're dead. Right. You only get like five shots or something, uh -huh. but they really do. Work and, and it's really good. Um, this game was such a great experience, and I really need to finish my playthrough. But I'm 
playing a ton of puzzling places. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had a great time with this. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I think Star Wars is a great universe to set games in. And this is yet again reinforcing that statement. There's so much cool stuff in this game. I love using the multi-tool. Yeah, that's that's a part of this that really lands when you're in VR. And I don't think people like maybe they do or don't understand. Because here's the thing, like unlike people who are insane, talk about ray tracing. They're like, when you look back on your life and you think about all the years you spent without ray tracing, do you really want to have that many behind you? And it's like ray tracing doesn't land vr though is fundamentally and paradigm wise a completely different thing and it's really hard to convey how cool it is to be like we have this multi-tool on our belt at all times and you can either this is especially true on the the uh the sense controllers for the psvr2 you can do three different modes on it like undo bolts so like kind of screwdriver sort of thing right uh a, a tase so that way you can connect uh like electrical wiring and shit and then a welding tool and all of these have really cool force feedback built into them haptics built into the trigger and the controller for melting and like kicking as you undo these bolts and all these other things and it's just really cool they built a lot of puzzles around it too mm -hmm. and it's like really neat to go up to these panels and it's just like how do i get this panel open oh i should weld it and it's it's just a really fun aspect of this otherwise completely badass shooter that I'm teleporting around in and <laughs> right. shooting motherfuckers with a shotgun. <laughs> I I love this. It was it was fifty dollars, uh, making it ten dollars cheaper. I think than Horizon, right? Yeah, yeah, because that was sixty. <laughs> if only I got the bundle, I could have saved the ten dollars. But we can't all be as smart as Doctor Agra. Hmm. <laughs> 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 oh do you disagree do you think you could be as smart as dr Agar? i really doubt it <laughs> no i just don't i'm pretty sure i didn't save ten dollars on the bundle well what really i thought it was i thought it was a uh, 400 no, I, wait 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 I, 600 I it was the same price really ah uh, that's wait, why I, I just went ahead and got the bundle okay so i have a question to ask you about the bundle uh-huh so i have the box here for my psvr2 is yours a different box or a slip cover? It's a different slip cover, I assume. Because okay. mine has all the Horizon stuff on it. We don't have any slip covers. We just have a box that holds a box inside. Well, that's like a slip a full... cover for the box, yeah. Well, kind of, because like, they're, they're I mean, older. It's, it's a box. Like I've got the box, and then okay. there's this very thin box around it that I have described as a slip cover. Right. Okay. Well, like a lot of consoles do the slip cover. That is, it's a normal box, and it's really just the four walls, right? Mm -hmm. And you slide that right, off. Yeah, That's a slip yeah. cover. This is a thin box. There's there's a difference. This has closing mechanisms and things in it. Well, so when I went to open different... it, it disintegrated. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I take it then, because weirdly enough, and I'm going to show this on camera because it's such a weird thing. You're telling me when you went to open it, one of the two sides, this specific thing, because it's perforated, it's designed to tear. Uh-huh. That tore for you, Agro? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, yeah. It went all the way down the side. <sighs> yeah. I've, being someone who worked retail, uh huh, those sort of boxes do not hold up well. No. No, <laughs> this is... It's very similar to the one on the PSVR 1, and I remember that thing just falling apart and us being like, I guess we have to offer a slight discount on this one. <laughs> okay, I was like, us being like, and he's like, he's going to out that we've had PSVR in a Kmart shopping bag for 10 years or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just going to tear... I need it to be symmetrical, so I'm going to tear the other side now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, so yours, yours... Mine on the front just has this. So yours has Horizon on it is that what you're saying aggro i believe so yeah okay okay i was curious are you serious though that you didn't save any money like i swear the digital copy of horizon 60 yeah okay so it does save you ten dollars okay good for you <laughs> my box doesn't have wait actually does your box have aloy on it or do they not have any aloy on your horizon box who do they I mean, have I, on I it? I can go is get the you? pieces real quick. Give me, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said it went to pieces. Yeah, he said it tore down the side. I, I'm starting to, like, I assumed he meant, like, part of the lid. Mm. But if it's in pieces, how excited were you for this fucking VR, Agra? 
<laughs> now, I, I know it can't be this. I okay. know, of course, it isn't actually this. But in my head, when you say Aloy on the box, <laughs> I just see face app smiling Aloy on the box. <laughs> Does she have the headset on? Because I feel like that elevates it further. <laughs> God, if she had the VR on her head, Jesus, that'd be really good. Uh, it'd be really good. No, no, Aloy, just the the big Vista with your character on the peak. And I'm trying like a thunder I'm, jaw on one side. I'm trying to imagine what our character looks like, and I'm not sure I've seen him. I in mean, the it's game his yet. back from a distance. Yeah, okay. Because it, it, in my head, he's just a Far Cry character. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like yeah. This shot's pretty Far Cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cover art for the game. You can look on the digital okay. forum. See, I'm pretty sure that's gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah, that is because there's a small okay. picture of the cover art here. It's just gotcha. a wide ass version of that. Um. <clears throat> But yes, uh, Star Wars was really fucking good, and I thought I would be pissed by the end of beating that game that I spent fifty. Uh huh. No, that was that was an awesome experience for fifty. I immediately started a second playthrough where I didn't make that goddamn drink. <laughs> uh, there's something absolutely amazingly fun and transcendent about this game. is so far beyond even what the the sci-fi of VR was in the nineties. Uh huh. It's just like you're in these giant environments that you can move through so quickly that have a fidelity unlike what you would expect. And yeah, you can like, just shoot correctly in a 3D space. The amount of details like on all the stuff you hold too, like seeing a stormtrooper rifle rendered that well was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you also have the training droids that you can just throw out three at a time of and then go <laughs> up and zap the enemies. Yes. That's really good. It was a fantastic experience. Rivaled only by puzzling places. <laughs> a 3D VR jigsaw game that I have spent. Well, let me just say I'm very excited and scared of that new PlayStation firmware update. That'll tell me exactly how many hours I spent with an easily accessible menu. Because at this point, Bob, as I'm sure you're aware, because I've just been on this side of your living room doing this mm -hmm. for hours. I have probably spent at least 16 hours in that game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did that most of the time while I beat Atomic Heart. <laughs> We're sure going to get to the end of the year and Dan's going to have one game on his game of the year list and it's going to be that game. <laughs> my goal, my hope and prayer for end in this game of the year is that I don't have both the Jigsaw game and Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy Edge on my top 10. <laughs> I hope only the Jigsaw game survives because as much praise as I just put on Star Wars, I do think that Puzzling Places is actually a better experience. Like hmm. there's something transcendently um, zen about it. There's It has soundscapes for each of these areas because you're building temples. You're building the front of like bars in Japan. There's so much stuff in this game in different spaces and different types of things you construct like a normal jigsaw puzzle, but with either 25, 50, 100, 200, 400 pieces in 3D. And the different elements of it will make different sounds. You know, you'll hold up a light from a street lamp and it'll make the buzzing sound huh. that they would, and you put it into place. It's so great and such an amazing experience. And the trophies are completely sadistic. And I think I need to tap out now because I got oh, all of no. them that were remotely sane. <laughs> Let me explain what remotely sane is. That game needs multiplayer. <laughs> it yes. does. We actually said that on our first stream with it. Me and Eric are like, we need to speed run this. And the cool thing is when you beat it, it does tell you how long you took. Because one of the trophies requires you do a hundred piece jigsaw in under 12 minutes. So I kept speed running the bar over and over and over and over and over until I could get good enough to do that in under 12 minutes. And they're like, okay, here's a, here's another trophy. Do a 400 piece jigsaw puzzle with no reference images. And I'm like, mm. well, I've, I speed ran this one so many times. This will take no time at all. I spent hours in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, hours like and hours, hours I yeah. think. Yeah. Splitting it was like that thing into 400. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. four hours and four minutes, I think. Four hours and 11 minutes. It was such a long time I spent in there. And I'm like, there's a world of difference between doing a 100-piece version of this and doing 400-piece version of this because it cuts it into such tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. It's really... It's, I find the 400-piece very stressful. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm supposed to, but I do. There's just something about that. 
Anyways, the rest of the trophies are doing 400 piece versions of everything in the core game. So I'm going to buy some DLC instead. That's more sane. And do the 50 to 100 piece versions. It's such a great experience. Uh, I said it during the stream. It really doesn't translate to the stream at all. In fact, it doesn't even translate to being outside of the headset. But you are in a, a sky gradient zone while you construct these things and you get to set the colors. And in the headset, setting this exact gradient of this shade of blurple to this shade of purple or whatever, or deep blue or teal or whatever, and getting to see that fill the space around you in this HDR headset is so gorgeous and amazing looking. That is such a great experience. I hope I don't make it to game of the year and try to argue up puzzling places. <laughs> if I get there though, and it hasn't been knocked off this list because not enough Resident Evil 4 remakes came out or Armored Core 6s, then I'm going to have to do that. And that's that's truly troubling. Yeah, I mean, you're you're talking to a guy who finished building a church and then like just 3D put it over his head so he could listen to it. Yes. And then maybe kind of dozed off in the headset <laughs> because it was so fucking chill. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I played PSVR 1 a, a lot, like a decent bit, especially in the week leading up, and the amount of comfort level that even 2 gets over 1 mm -hmm. is so extreme. So when I hear from everyone that PSVR 1 and 2 are the most comfortable headsets, it's kind of concerning. Yeah, it does make you feel like you're going to try anything else and it's going to be horrid. And I'm going to be like, no wonder you motherfuckers don't play games, right? <laughs> <laughs> I say this, uh, let me explain that, that quote just then. Everyone I've ever talked to about VR was very fi fanatic about VR, uh, fanatical. Um, but it was always about VR chat and never about games. I never heard anyone gush about VR experiences mm. in games. Um, so I hope eventually I get to try those other headsets. I'm actually going to try to contact some manufacturers and be like, hey, I'm really interested in fair coverage on the VR front now that I've had a really great experience, but I don't have like $400 to spend on your thing. Is there any way we could work something out? Uh, we'll see if that goes anywhere. If not, that's fine. I guess I could just be the guy who's like, PSVR 2 is great. <laughs> have you tried this $1,500 headset? Of course not. That's $1,500. It's $1,500. <laughs> that's not when you say, an no, I'm normal. <laughs> No, I'm in fact the 99.999% of people who haven't. Um, in this one way, I am normal. <laughs> uh, but that's that's all I want to say about puzzling places. Uh, did you want to say anything else about Star Wars or any other? Um, I really like the lightsaber stuff. Oh, that was incredible. Yeah, there was something really nice about being able to throw the saber out and then have it come back to you automatically. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And when you swing the saber, it has the proper like sounds and vibrations you expect from that. And when you throw it, you get to feel the vibration as it comes back to you like you're feeling the force. Yeah, and, mm. they, and they let you actually fight little creatures, so they're okay with cutting them in half. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, look at these fucking... Uh, what, what, what is gremlins almost yeah basically just chop them in half. uh yeah i really hope that we get a whole game like that oh yeah they just need to make another one of those mm -hmm. like the shooting was so fun the lightsaber ing it was so fun they need to make a jedi knight game <laughs> they do they need to make that <laughs> if uh, kyle could cut uh, in first person the only way we get him back i'll take it oh yeah absolutely <laughs> like whatever gets kyle katar back into the fold <laughs> whatever it takes man I'm pretty sure there are a lot of Star Wars fans who would buy a fucking headset frame one if a Kyle Katarn game came out on it. Yeah, you don't have any other characters like, yeah, he's known for using a gun and a lightsaber at once. <laughs> yeah, which, you know, you could do in that game feasibly. Right. You could have, because I didn't explain how we had six guns. You have two on your on your hip, two on your shoulders, and you could hold two. Yeah, it's it's so great how if you can just reach for your gun in your holster like completely naturally. Yeah. Like it's completely off screen. I just reach down, pull the gun out and shoot some guy behind me or something. It's like and it's so responsive yeah, and re normal, mm -hmm. natural. And the funniest thing is you get so used to how effectively it does that that when you reach for a gun and draw it out and you forgot you didn't have a gun there, it's <laughs> yeah. fucking hilarious. Because <laughs> you're now just pointing at a guy who's shooting you to death. 
And, and Dan was messing around a lot with the teleporting, whereas I didn't do that as much and did a lot of actually moving. So yes. it was a bunch of like, because there's a crouch button, but I never used it. Right. I just actually crouched. crouched behind cover. And I was like, this is really cool. Honestly, uh, and I was talking to, because we have a VR game channel on our Discord or on our fan Discord now. Link in the description if you're interested in joining our Discord. Um, people were talking about putting exercise mats out so that way it doesn't hurt your feet if you have hardwood floor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, if we were going to stay here any longer, I might actually consider that for VR content, but we're supposed to move. Right. Um, but it would be really cool to have that matting and then just literally drop to the floor when you need to take cover. Yeah, because you could need to get like the full on the mats don't even roll out the ones you actually piece together yeah absolutely <laughs> and you just drop to the ground and do your cool you could you could dodge yeah. you know it's room scale so you <laughs> could just do some cool dodging shit um yeah yeah that was that was a great game i really look forward to completing my playthrough now that i've done every sane trophy in puzzling places mm -hmm. they sell a billion dlcs for that game by the way and i'm not even mad about it i'm just like <laughs> Uh, how much is that? Oh, it's a little bit less than a dollar for each. Sure. Absolutely. These are such cute little fun experience. Absolutely. Sure. Um, I also want to bring up the storm troop rifles are insanely good. Like super incredibly accurate. accurate. Damn damage of like, how are they so bad with these? Uh, you know, somebody tweeted the image at me where it's two stormtroopers talking to each other. It's like, I can't see out of this helmet. <laughs> and that's got to be it. Yeah. Didn't you wear the stormtrooper helmet at one part? You I do. felt like that was really good fan service. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> once again, not a Star Wars fanboy, but there's a lot of good fan service in this too. Like, yeah. you know, how cool it is to use a fucking lightsaber and change hands and then throw it. And then, oh, just it, anyway. It, it, and for... If this is what gets you going for Star Wars fandom, you can put together three free PO because he's been torn to pieces. Yeah, he's been ripped asunder and you can just pop his arms and shit back on. And shove his eye back in. <laughs> God. Yeah, uh, I'm shocked that worked. Because I'm just looking at his eye dangle and you're like, I'm going to poke it back in. And I'm like, how many times has that worked ever? And then it worked. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. Um, Eric gave himself motion sickness. Oh uh, yeah, he hit the button oh. that said "Don't hit this button," and he did. <laughs> right, Eric's like, I care. That's not gonna stop me. I can't read. Right. <laughs> to to be specific, what he did. Um, as we said, this game has teleporting, so that way people who aren't who who aren't used to VR don't get motion sick because they can just move themselves to look around the room and teleport to move. There is an option, and then then you can move with the sticks. Where hitting the stick will sort of like immediately cut you a certain number of degrees in whichever direction you hit the stick and then the left stick moves you but they have an option in the fucking menu and i swear to god if i was here when he when he was looking at it i would have said out loud that literally is the image that says only stupid asshole sit in this box eric do not check this because it's called smooth turn so you hit the thing to turn to the left and they move you slowly and within Eight minutes of doing this, Eric's incapacitated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's literally like, oh, it don't feel and so good. Just just so we like that there was a warning screen on the on the screen, he hit the button on. <laughs> I told him why it was there. All of the chat told him not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he walked right into this rake, okay? I can't believe this fucking gave him rope to hang himself with and said hey don't hang yourself with this rope that's made for hanging <laughs> uh yeah so anyway that, that, that was a that was a good experience uh, we also had a local local friend and fan uh fan of the channel um <laughs> handsome joe come by to check it out because he's a huge star wars fan and uh we have a new we have a new policy it's called the the joe policy uh, don't let someone who's completely new to VR move with the sticks. If they're trying the Star Wars game, make them use teleport. Right. Because he was clearly okay being in that space and could tolerate moving with the sticks, but it was so new to him, right? He had no mm -hmm. VR legs at all that he made himself sick pretty fast. Yeah, he lasted probably 15, being, 20 minutes. I would, I would say 20, 20 to 30, yeah, because he made it through the whole tutorial and he wasn't blazing through it. Right, that's true. Um... But he seemed to think he was really neat. You know, the Millennium Falcon flies by and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, because of course. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, I'm am d- done talking about that. Did you want to say anything about VR games? No, so we I think need that... a clean transition to something else. Um, right. Real quick, I see a lot of people calling my mustache in this episode the Ted Lasso mustache. I like to think of it as the Henry Cavill's ruining a reshoot mustache. <laughs> you know, when they go to when they go to cut scenes from this into a different big thing, they're gonna have to CG off my mustache. See, anyway, I, I respect I respect Henry Cavill for that because he's like, I need it for another movie. You're less important. Yeah, no, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <yeah>. Right? <laughs> he, he was right to do it, and it's funny as hell that he did. Um. Anyway, hey Bob, hey, what other games did you play last week? I got to play the Woe Long demo. I thought he was going to say Atomic Heart. Yeah, uh, Woe Long, Crispy Critters. Have, did they have... fix everything? No, <laughs> they fixed that uh... one thing. What's the one thing? Um, the way that healing worked in the previous demo is you literally be locked in place. It was hard to get him to even activate the animation to heal. Um, well, that's good because that was a major fucking problem. Yeah. So now that just works like it does in every other game where you can walk around a little bit while you heal and the animation starts when you hit the button. <laughs> Other than that, this is still like got all the problems I talked about in the previous demo of every weapon's got a really, really small move list. Yeah. Uh, there's still frame rate stutters on the PS5. That's weird. Yeah. It, real quick, though, is this like the game runs 60 and then just shits like it's a PC? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot like that. Okay, so it's not Stranger of Paradise bad, but no, it is. No, it's not Stranger okay. of Paradise bad. It's really just, okay. oh, this has dips in places that make no sense. Okay, cool. So it's exactly like PC gaming. <laughs> yes. A lot of times those dips are in the middle of boss fights when you really need to hit a, t- a time for parry perfectly. Great. It's oh, amazing. If you're, you're going to make parrying a core thing of your game, it has to rock, be rock solid. Yeah. it's. That's okay. why I really didn't enjoy Sekiro until it was on PS5 and everything ran smooth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, were there any other appreciable differences between the betas or demos or whatever you want to call them i can't think of any like everything else is super the same this is actually the beginning of the game so the other day de- okay the other beta shoved you forward a few missions and didn't introduce all the mechanics is is it wouldn't the full game mm-hmm. so now i got to see how these mechanics are introduced initially and if they make more or less sense no not really like the morale system is still just bizarre and bad because this yeah I'm, I'm this isn't this is like an insane thing i recognize this is me being insane mm-hmm. the fact every enemy just has a number floating over their head pisses me off and makes me not want to play the game <laughs> <laughs> well guess what star wars doesn't have that <laughs> um <laughs> But <laughs> you have to build up your morale to use the spells you've already unlocked in each stage. Uh-huh. So I unlock like three different kinds of uh, uh, water magic spells. Mm-hmm. I can only use the first tier of those until after I build up my morale for that level. So I need to go beat up random dudes and find plague locations to, before I can use my uh, cloaking spell. Like... This sounds like why? A, this sounds like a bad nightmare I'm having about Neo becoming Dynasty Warriors in the worst way possible because that had a morale system. Mm-hmm. What you're trying to convey to me is incomprehensible to my brain, and I've spent my entire life playing video games. Yeah, it's it's a system that's there, so the game is different, not so that it's interesting or better. Oh, okay. It's one of those systems where it's just like the game would be better without this. And that's it, man. Okay. All right. And then the rest of the game is, like I said, really simple combos. It seems like the special moves you get for each weapon are dictated by the random drop of that weapon. So I guess you just have to grind out random drops to hope to get a new move for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, try to think of anything else. Yeah, other than that, it's just like a poor man Sekiro like everything's just based on the the parry mechanic so of course they don't have a fleshed out move list it's all just about hitting the parry and then doing a counter attack okay um, um yeah I know a lot of people have been like hey are either of you excited and Bob's played the demo and has like this long list of reasons he doesn't like it um I looked at it and could tell it's not a game I would enjoy so I'm really not going to give it the time of day and this <laughs> isn't malice this is just you know there's a reason we have uh, it's been great we have the souls as a genre thing because uh-huh. it clues me into i'm probably not going to enjoy this right um 
that game just immediately looking at it i'm like i'm probably not gonna enjoy that it, yeah it, it feels like they decided to walk walk it soulsier than any of the others even <laughs> yeah because okay it, 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 like ne like neo 2 is practically a normal action game like it has all the gear shit and leveling mm -hmm. but in terms of controls it feels so much more like a normal action game yeah like you have you a ton of jump. different options yeah but... i can see that just watching that game i even played a little bit of that game and neo is on the spectrum of souls games one of the ones i've enjoyed more even though it doesn't have like it, its art design doesn't land like demon souls remake mm -hmm. obviously uh, and I didn't really play enough Neo 2 to have an opinion on Neo 2, but it it's clear that has way more money. <laughs> yeah, they also just added tons of moves and stuff. And systems and stuff, yeah, like and you were talking we... about the Aria of Sorrow Souls thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand the shape or form of Wolong and who it's for and why. Yeah, they also added, they added the jump button to this, but they made it feel really bad. Huh. Like, you have a double jump and you can climb up certain objects, but it all just feels wonky and like it doesn't work right most of the time. So I don't even know why it's here. It's like, cool. Does, did, did they fix, did they, did they add a crouch? Or do no. you still have to... Man, I have Game Pass and I'm still not going to play this game. Yeah, you saw Oh, it's to... on Game Pass? Mm-hmm. It's I'll day play one ten... Game Pass. That's... Maybe that's I'll play uh, how minutes. they that's how they announced it. It was one of Microsoft's big wins last year. And then two months later, Sony just hit a play where they were making a triple A <laughs> Neo type game with Game Ninja. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit looks really good. Right. Uh, they showed things in that trailer that instantly had more me more interested than any of these other Tecmo Koei games. <laughs> uh, that looked awesome. But yeah, to, so what Chris was asking about was crouching. Uh -huh. No, you have to sneak by slow walking. Oh, that sucks so bad. Nope, that's... It, it requires more execution. You have to perfectly hold the stick at the right trajectory so you don't move slightly too fast. Why don't you get a job? A different one, because game developer isn't working out. Um, <laughs> Why don't you get a job? Oh, no. Chris turned into their dad. Uh, their solution to this is that, that cloaking spell I bought. Uh-huh. But then I couldn't use because I have to level up, level up morale in that stage. Yeah. I'm just going to leave the podcast to get away it, from this game. Bye. It, this feels weirdly like Team Ninja saw all their success from making like more action game feel oriented games with like Souls type elements in them. Mm -hmm. And then went, what if we threw that away to make one even more Souls like? Yeah, it's so down weird. to having weird ar cryptic arcane mechanics. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it seems it feels like they specifically wanted to make a Sekiro, but couldn't do it for some reason. Had to add in their own weird systems and make it worse. I, um, Inconceivable. <laughs> yeah, I. OK, I, I should probably move on. But first, I do want to talk about some of the things I read in reviews for this, which I thought sure. were crazy. Sure, absolutely. This game's apparently like 20 hours, which is like a third the length of any Neo game. Has way less enemy variety. And what was, oh, right. Then a lot of reviewers said they had no interest in playing the new game plus. And it was like, why are you giving this an eight? This sounds like literally just worse than any other neo or any of the neo games by a lot i mean a lot of they probably gave it to their souls reviewers over there and, right you know being huge fans of the soul genre you know there are certain genres for certain people that even a bad one is a really good game i guess that's just how people work um you know like I've talked so much shit about certain entries in the actual Castlevania timeline, but it's like at the end of the day, that's still Castlevania. Yeah. Like Order of Ecclesia still, be it still clears most video games ever. Fair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, that could be, that could be it mm -hmm. for a lot of them. They could be the souls reviewers for those sites. And I'm like, you know, this sort of um, weird serpent eating its own tail fucking energy here. <laughs> is kind of like to some extent makes me feel like where we ended up in seventh gen with we the critics giving the weirdest and worst feedback possible because it's just these weirdos who are specifically really into this thing are the only people who ever get to review anything in that sect of game anything of that genre of game mm -hmm. but you know there's there's never any way journalistic feedback would ever 
positively or negatively <laughs> reinforce the people making games, right? Yeah, no, they don't even notice or pay attention. No. And thank God, because if they did, um, that's all I can think of. Okay. Because when you mentioned that earlier, that's that's the first thing I thought of, of like, maybe it's the Souls reviewers. Yeah. Maybe it's the Souls reviewers. Yeah, maybe it can be a downgrade in every way from their previous outing and you still give it an eight. I don't... Well, it's different. I guess. <laughs> uh, did you have anything else you wanted to say about Wolong? No, no, I, I, I'm good to move on. Okay, well, I'm taking this from chat because uh, it was funny enough when I read it that uh, I think they would appreciate it being put in here. Uh, so that's so long, whoa long. Let's <laughs> move oh. on to our next game. Is, <laughs> thank you, Jay Sherman. <laughs> yeah, I know. It stinks. Uh, <laughs> hey, Bob, what else did you play? I played a good chunk of Octopath Traveler 2. Ooh. Ooh. Um, well, chat, why are you booing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's Octopath 2? It's been pretty good. I've just been going around doing the chapter ones for all the different characters. Because once you beat it as one character, you get to wander the world map and find the others and play their uh, opening chapter when mm -hmm. you find them. Uh, so I got to the um, animal girl who's like, I think wolf or not something. I'm, I'm just imagining, imagine, he's like animal girl, and my brain just goes, Aisha Clan Clan. <laughs> I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I'm going to need to look up an image so I can replace it. Do you have any idea what her name is? Oh, my God. Uh, Ocheta, I think. It's like O-C-H-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Okay. Ochet. Yeah. Ochet, I'm yeah. I'm seeing that. Okay. Bayonetta got it. Mm-hmm. Uh. Her story was great because it has uh, Jameson Price doing a Mufasa character. <laughs> That's really good. Literally Lion Man, who is her like father figure. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't realize how simply I could be sold on this game. <laughs> All right. Uh, she has a lot of cool mechanics. She can catch monsters and use them in fights. Mm -hmm. So you get the like the health low and then you can throw a net out and then you only have so many slots. So if you want to get rid of that monster, she turns it into food. Ooh, <laughs> like you can literally just make jerky out of these lizard men. <laughs> yeah, this image I'm looking at for her and I'm trying to get into the podcast is literally her eating the meat. Yeah, that, that is a big part of her character. <laughs> so is the meat just like, is it a health thing? Do you get combat buffs? Um, He's asking if this is secretly a saga game and she will turn into a monster or a robot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can use them as health restore, but you can also use them to recruit people. Like, uh, she can also do that. So, like, random townsfolk, you could be like, okay, I'll give you five pieces of jerky. Come help us. Oh, shit. And then I will give you this mysterious uncooked meat. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, she cooks the meat. Um,. One thing I really, really stands out after uh -huh. playing Live a Live. Uh huh. This has professional voice acting. Wow. Well, yeah, you just said Mufasa was fucking Jim Price. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, but, that's basically the peak. I don't. But yeah, it seems to like have like real voice actors and actually doing a good job. It's, it, it is such a necessary thing not to have something happen like what happened with Live a Live. I don't know how that was released. Yeah. Did Live a Live just have like Trials of Mana level voice acting? It was worse. I like that, Trials that, of that Mana's Square, voice acting. <laughs> Square, Square Enix really he seems to have like we either do really, really good dubs or we do like you're you're shunted back in time to 1995. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did feel like a production that would have happened in the Mega Man X era sort of stuff, like Mega Man X4, that sort of dub. I feel like Trials fires above that. I don't oh, know yeah, about Trials Live does. Live. Okay. Yeah, I it's really live, live, live where it's like some of these guys don't have professional microphones. <laughs> a lot of them. So what you're saying is it might all. be a COVID problem. <laughs> Maybe. Because that would have been going through. That, that wouldn't excuse the not acting, but it would excuse the <laughs> microphones. Yeah, it's just okay. like the most stale delivery of every single okay. line from the, the the mech guy. I'm like, wow. I f I don't know. I feel like dubs got better during COVID because they took a lot of them did. from because they had such a bigger pool of people to work with. In mm -hmm. fact, a lot of voice actors I follow on Twitter broke into the industry. 
for real during COVID because it's like, well, we have to hire people. We have to do things over distance anyway, so we might as we can take more people now. Right. Yeah. I missed my chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think this is a lot of like, this is a mix of a veteran actors like Jameson Price and brand new actors. Like it's not, there are definitely a lot yeah. of voices I haven't heard before and have looked up and like, oh, well, their first role was like Genshin Impact or something, something really new. Right. And they they nail it. So so you're telling me it's not Jameson Price and his five friends who are all Tony Oliver? No. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's been really fun. Cool. Um, I did get to play a lot of the other characters. I think the the merchant's pretty neat. It's like in the old West town that's been run down. And uh, he's trying to bring everything back from poverty. And I think his story was kind of generic, but then it ended with this incredible jazz song for the final act of it. And I was like, okay, it's great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking goaded, actually. Damn. Awesome. Um, but as I unlocked more and more of them, I realized some of the mechanics overlap with each other too much. They're too similar between characters? Yeah, like you'll get multiple characters that can recruit someone in town. You'll get multiple characters that can um, find out information from someone in town. Like there's an, one character has the inspect ability and another character has the inquire ability. And they basically, they both give you the same exact text entry. And then the third one has inject. <laughs> it just <laughs> drugs people and asks them the truth. Yeah, and I feel like there's there's too much overlap in those. Okay. It feels like this could have been an incredible four characters. Like, they all had inc really, oh, really distinct okay. and different things. Ooh. Instead, they've been kind of split out to eight. Okay. Um, which, is, it's not bad, but it could right. be better. Yeah. I mean, maybe the story writing compensates for that, where you're just kind of like, this it would be better than just having four with unique mechanics because we have so many different character stories that are compelling. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it'll be something like that where that works out. Or maybe one of them's Babylon's fault. <laughs> <sighs> um, I was really surprised. This has a job system? Okay. I didn't think that would happen where each of them has their own job. Mm -hmm. But you get, like, I went to a like a place where they just gave me a scroll of this job and I can put that on anyone. It was someone else's job that I already had in my party. So I got two mages. Okay. Which one throws rocks? <laughs> um, where there is actually someone who shows rocks, Good, but it's not a job <laughs> you can get. It's one of the, like this is, game is will it? sometimes part you with random dudes in the pre like chapter ones that will not, I assume won't come back. Mm. Some of them literally die, but other ones just leave. They just go, I'm no longer important. Yeah. I think, I think Inventor throws random shit. Oh, yeah. I haven't got these. The only one I haven't unlocked yet. I've invented. Oh, that was like, I unlocked that one in the demo. I just walked into a random house and some guy's like, hey, what's up? You see all this crazy shit in my house? Yeah. Here's a scroll. I have invented the flying book. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an invention. You just threw a book at him. I feel like that is a Final Fantasy Tactics job, so that checks out. <laughs> but yeah, no, they they had um they had the job mechanic in the first one. Oh you yeah, could, you could sub into other characters' jobs because I remember having the little merchant girl go like full warrior, and it was amazing. <sighs> it was really funny to put the like animal girl into the the professor outfit because it's like this doesn't work <laughs> yeah i'm gonna need my playthrough of atomic heart to end now so i can start playing this game <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ um i did oswald's story who's like the magician um the scholar if you will that's a good magician name uh edgar you also did this right i did do you think harvey is real no, 100% not. Okay. I just had to check this by someone. Because he's framed for killing his wife and daughter and burning down his house. Okay. He then later remembers this, the incident where this happens. And he walks up to his house on fire. And then Harvey walks out and gloats and laughs at him. Is the police take him away? Like, as if the police don't even see him. And then see his taunting. And it's so like incredibly transparent that i'm like is that really what you're doing <laughs> it's really yeah. funny H harvey is also the name of a of a james stewart movie where he talks to an imaginary six foot tall rabbit named harvey <laughs> that was kind of my first tip off 
Yep. <laughs> Great. I was like, wait a second, imaginary friend, Harvey. This is ringing bells. And then Agra, I was like, James Stewart. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. all right. <laughs> like, I've been in prison for the murder of my wife and daughter for two years. I'm not crazy. You're <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Well, yeah. what is this fucking condemned? <laughs> <laughs> When's the reboot? I don't, who the fuck owns condemned? I actually I don't, know. don't know. I'm always confused on that. I feel like it was a really Let me check, low tier now publisher. I'm curi- now I'm curious. Oh, Monolith, who made fucking um like Blood and and the Shadow and the fucking Mordor game. So they're yeah, making, so making Wonder Woman. We're making Wonder Woman. <laughs> But who published it? Sega published it, so Sega owns Condemned. Well, I'm sure we'll hear about them uh, selling it to Embracer for $45 billion or something soon. And then, uh, don't and worry. then Amazon's going to make the Condemned show. <laughs> don't worry. There's a Japanese company doing that. They'll be like, oh, yeah, give us, I don't know, two fifty, Like $250. Million. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, I got that in my pocket. Let's fucking go. <laughs> They're like, condemned, that's not we're going to sell. And then somehow we get, like, Embracer license the IP to some studio Sony made. It's using the Sony Visual Arts Group Fidelity cut scenes. And everyone everyone in the world's like, condemned is this? What the fuck is going on? What is this? It's going to be weirder than the Prey reboot. <laughs> yeah. Where everyone's just, all right, sure. Fuck. What the hell? The Prey reboot still the most insane story in gaming of, you can make whatever, just call it Prey. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they did that. I really don't. I mean, Prey's a, Prey's a cool name. It is. They, they sold copies based on it being Prey, 100%. Mm-hmm. Like, it sucks. I think it's a shitty practice. It's fucking laughable that that's literally what they said. But it also works. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, not, I mean, not that many sales because it's, it's an arcane game, I think. Mm-hmm. It sold a lot for an arcade game, which means it was pulling the weight of the world. <laughs> Fucking Prey being the title was Atlas. It, it, sold, it sold a lot for an arcade arcane game, meaning it only mildly failed. Man, imagine if they just made that Prey 2 concept. I no. bet that would sell. Sorry, no. Nobody wants to be a space bounty hunter in no a one Far would Cry want, kind of game. No, no one, one would want that. No one. What? What's to, that was human head, right? Didn't don't they yeah. now aren't Machine they now head? also owned by Microsoft? Machine head? I think so. Yeah, it was human head. Of... They they got they got swallowed by Bethesda. Yeah, oh. yeah. I'm pretty sure they're owned by Bethesda, so they should be. Oh right, because Bethesda was also doing those horrible tactics where they string someone along and then wait until they were completely drained of money and buy them. Cool. Oh, Great minds. Oh god. Oh god. This human head made the quiet man. The oh god, they also made Brink. <laughs> yeah. They did, yeah, you're right. They did make Brink. So they're British, right? I uh, I I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I know that was an earnest no, they're question. From Wisconsin, <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know. I need, I need to play question, the first. I need to play no. the original Prey so I can be upset at what happened to them. You're like, are they British? Can we shoot them into space? <laughs> like, for some reason, my brain's like, why is he asking if they're British? What is he going to do? It's just that Brink is, seems very British, but I guess isn't. Like, something about all the designs have that, have a big jawline like they're I mean, inspired by. The original Syndicate's British. <laughs> mm. I'm trying to remember with Brink. Like, it, did it have a bunch of Irish voice acting? I think it did that. Like, I think it was that more than UK. Yes, for sure. I just horribly disassociated i'm sorry okay. all right uh did you have anything else you or aggro want to say about octopath 2 before we go on i don't did, did you aggro oh no i have not gotten past the demo yet okay okay that's great um i'm just gonna decide what the next game is i have been stuck in the floor eight times in atomic art this game is what? unforgivable <laughs> Four I of only those got were the locks i had to close the game and restart it <laughs> I only got stuck in the floor once outside of that one spot where you always fall through the floor unless you fa- land exactly in the center of the platform. Dan, you're playing on PC, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> I just... It's I such just... a superior experience. 
<laughs> you decided to play a Eurojank game at launch on PC. Oh dear, what will happen? I'm like, oh, you. it's only a dollar Microsoft to cover myself in gasoline and play with this lighter? <laughs> this sounds like a fun time. Uh, I'm playing in four times 1440p resolution. Uh, cause my 4090 is bored. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that at 144 frames per second. It's Jeez. really weird. <laughs> uh, I turned off DLSS because it just looks wrong in this game more so than I most mean, of the DLSS. games. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. DLSS, like not the frame one, which they have that by the way, Bob. So I could kick this up to 4k and then kick it up to 8k and then turn on the generate frames feature. Oh, so we can have yet another game where I can point out, wow, the GPU has fucking hardware accelerated soap opera mode. Isn't this I, I, neat? I can't, I can't believe that the feature that is, we're going to make up how the game looks, <laughs> makes the game look weird. Isn't that strange? It's such a simple concept to grasp. And yet I've watched several tech reviewers bend over backwards to say it looks fine. I don't notice what half of the frames look like. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's it just, but the normal DLSS, the upscaling technology, it doesn't deal with highlights well, I felt. So I'm actually using the normal temporal AA that's built into the game's engine. Okay. Weirdly enough, a lot of game engines are worse than DLSS. So it feels weird to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing four times 1440p, which is like 5160 or 20 times 2880, but I don't fucking. And then downscaling that to my 1440p monitor. I'm playing this game. It has a really cool world and a really funny story. And it's a Bioshock. I'm, I'm only a few hours into this game. I believe Bob and Chris have bo both beaten it. So I get to say my earnest opinions because I'm not that deep into it, in my opinion, like maybe five hours at most. Right. Maybe seven at absolute most, but it, well, it, probably not because it keeps locking me into geometry. Anyway. <laughs> but it's a really cool world and something i like about this bioshock like is that i don't get the idea that <laughs> how did i phrase this to you bob it was like i don't get the idea that the, they're gonna do a twist and be like oh my god aren't you amazed instead it's gonna be like this stupid asshole didn't notice all of these signs. The main <laughs> character's an idiot, and I love that He's about this great. game. He's great. He's fantastic. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like if you executed Deacon deliberately as a comedy character. Yes, yes. That, that is the vibe is that. I got from every review I watched or read, and I was like, this these guys have to be wrong. This has got to be brilliant, right? And then yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah, no, every step of the way, our main what, character what is, is just not the delightful about motherfucker screaming like, at everything in the room. He's like, shut up, toaster. Like, that's literally his energy. He would berate <laughs> a toaster. Well, like, what is not delightful about this dude charging through, like, an exploding hallway screaming, oh, fuck, the robots are sucking my dick. Oh, fuck, <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah every catchphrase he rolls out is just the way like the the performer is nailing it and the script is nailing it <laughs> right. because every fucking line he's just like well shit on a shingle the robots are killing us all <laughs> video <laughs> game written by someone who's actually met a special forces soldier <laughs> some, of the, some of the delivery some of the delivery is like so intense Mm -hmm. but in a way that feels comedic, like he turns into Al Bundy almost. Yes! Mm -hmm. During... <laughs> yes! <laughs> Literally that! Um, also, there's a really horny Coke fridge that wants to suck your dick. Um, so that's really that's funny. Whole thing. That is a whole thing. And it is very much that it's very funny to have a coke fridge this horny for I, me <laughs> i am almost certain that at some point in that game's development you had to get into the fridge to get your upgrades because it looks like it's supposed to open like an iron maiden but it never actually does yes they show you the full inside of it and like it's the, got a lot of contraptions in it yeah, yeah. when, it when you like craft you a new thing it opens up and they show you the guts because right. that's where the item comes from mm-hmm but it would make sense for you to get in it because you not only craft weapons and ammo you can, and healing items, you can also upgrade your skills 
through the horn and coke fridge. Right. What a but good. At, like, at, at the same I time, wish this are... video game was like Sony developed, but everything at this studio written. Mm -hmm. Because I love the world. I love the story. The main character's nailed. The glove that talks to you is nailed, which, man, doesn't that feel bad? <laughs> yeah, That's the, the, yeah, I was eight months, months after it. <laughs> <laughs> It you, like it works because the glove yeah. tells you interesting things, uh -huh. or, or or it feels it feels like a lot of conversations of, uh, hey main character, isn't it weird how these things don't line up? And then the main character goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it tells you interesting things, and it is like obligated to be nice to you. So there's yes. not the you're watching a married couple fight, like yeah. fucking Forspoken. It's it's really good. They get the straight man comedy bit absolutely right with this glove. It is also a really interesting glove. It really does just tell you interesting things mm -hmm. nonstop. They nailed that. I'm totally shocked that they nailed that um, because I just came from Forspoken. <laughs> but yeah, so if this game could just have really enjoyable combat, not pretty okay combat at best mm -hmm. and not keep getting me stuck in the floor when it asked me to do platforming challenges that would be great because i really <laughs> enjoy some like every door has like a oh, what's up aggro i uh, played it on console can't relate e even on the uh, series x Played I, it on a good console, can't relate. <laughs> God damn it! I anytime I jump on something, I think I can jump on it. Usually gets me stuck. I could get out though. I'm on a soft block. I, yeah, four yeah, times I definitely, for me, it just um, completely soft. A, a I got in this weird state a bunch of times where it's like, oh right, don't try to jump anywhere near a seam because you get trapped and you're the infinite. You're falling. Yeah, and uh -huh. so eventually it feels like it goes. It feels like they built something and like just shove the player a little bit when they're stuck for too long. I can inform you that it did not happen. I walked away a couple times and it was just like, no, I'm just there forever. Because you even have like a boosty dodge in this game. Like the combat, the combat is really like your local high school indie band tried to make Doom Eternal. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's yeah, what really the combat feels like. They really think their melee combat is clever. Oh, yeah. Not. And they need to <laughs> knock that shit off and just give me enough bullets to play this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's really funny because the soundtrack's literally Mick Gordon. Oh, and, yeah, it is. And, and it's, it's amazing. So, yeah, sometimes it goes really hard. It is so, uh, like, transcendent as a soundtrack. If there's one part of this whole game that doesn't fit with the rest because of how good it is, it's the soundtrack. Merely because the main character and all the writing is nailed but you have to be smart enough to perceive they would, they did what they were going for, at least as far as I've experienced, because a lot of people are like, this main character is fucking stupid. I'm like, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> There's a fucking point. Are you not? Do you, did you miss the text of the game? This isn't a subtextual reason that he's a dipshit guys. <laughs> Pretty sure brain damage within there. <laughs> okay. I, Dan, Bob, did you guys get, did you guys get the AK 47? I did not. Not yet. I'm being a weirdo and sticking with my first three weapons for what is probably too long. I had to look up how you get the get weapons. Oh, the blueprints. Yeah. 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 Um, I didn't get the AK-47 <laughs> until very, very, very late. Oh. I, I did not get it at all. Yeah. I also did oh. not get the rocket launcher. So I was I, I rolled into the end of the game. It's like, well, I have the electro pistol that recharges and I have the shotgun and the normal pistol and all of those are maxed in every conceivable way because oh I have nothing God. else to spend resources on. Yeah, I guess I'll just I guess I'll just riddle the final boss with 700,000 pistol rounds. Yeah, they, they literally like the ra the blueprints are random drops. So I got the blueprint oh. for the rocket launcher in the final room of the game, so I couldn't make it. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's, what, that is enlightening. There's there's a lot of mistakes <laughs> made in this game. Oh yes. I, <laughs> I I definitely am at least intrigued to play this again in a year to 18 months because it's a Eurojank game and they'll be like, okay, now it is kind of at the state we should have released it in. <laughs> yeah, and four years from now it'll be in VR like No Man's Sky. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot fucking wait. <laughs> to lose my mind in VR in this game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this this um this game is, you know, in a recent 
uh, Civi video, he described Slav Jank as a game that's yes, I was... just pouring philosophical waxings at the audience, just pouring out of their mouth, and <laughs> is really ambitious, which ties into that, but doesn't have nearly enough money to accomplish it. I'm like, this feels like the quadruple A Slav Jank game. <laughs> like, yes, it does. Yeah, it, it, it's so fitting that's like this is Bioshock, and if you had had more time and money, it would have been Fallout. Cause, cause a lot of, a, cause a lot, cause one, you have the, you have the, the vault boy style graphics uh -huh. a little bit at the start. And when you die. Yeah. Yeah. There's a ton of those. And there's, there's a dialogue system where you can talk to NPCs. Yes. And they and kind of have an open world, but then there's like invisible, there's visible walls of lasers <laughs> set up all over to make sure you don't go too far. Yeah, which is insane. They're like, hey, get get from this part of the facility to another. And it's like, uh, yeah, there are giant laser walls making me very directly go down this road. What is this game? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was very, very I, I, weird. I, I do think it's very funny. The very beginning of this game has one of those laser fields. And it's like, uh, get get the get the like the one more chance ability where you don't instantly die from full health. You you survive, so you can pass through the laser field. Then you never pass through a laser field ever again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, this game's yeah. weird, man. Yeah, <laughs> what an just... amazing game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this game is really interesting. I am really enjoying it. I think the writing is absolutely nailed at the point I'm at because. I remember a viewer, not going to name names, a viewer of ours and friend uh, was like, hey, um, my my dad was interested in this game and he was worried if it was political and then he found out he couldn't invert the Y axis so he can't play it anyway. And I thought that was a very funny story. But the being worried about the politics of the game is very funny because when you play the game, it's like the politics. Everyone fucking sucks and wants power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the fucking game, all right? <laughs> that's, that's really good. Uh... So really, it's an apolitical game. Uh, first video <laughs> game with no politics. Um, yeah, I, I... This world's so good. And I just don't enjoy the combat enough to want to do it at all. Yeah. Part of me's like, is this going to be the first video game I ever turned the difficulty down on? Not because it's too hard and I can't beat it, which that has... Maybe happened a couple times in my youth, maybe. But like, because it's just the worst part of this game. <laughs> I mean, that's why I turned it down. Like, there's no way for me to turn down the floor eating my ass and me having to redo <laughs> the last few minutes of the game. So I guess that's the only dial I have option to turn. And I'm just like, I don't. The combat should be good. They have the makings of good combat in it. It just isn't at all. <laughs> no, especially when you fight the boss you have to fight was melee only. Ooh. That was <sighs> that was not good. <laughs> uh just real quick, it's the red one, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 I felt like I was going insane there because I even had cartridges that helped. Yeah, I actually I went and did other things until I could afford the because I happened to find a blueprint for a better melee weapon. It was like, maybe this will help. And it helped a little bit. But really? Not nearly enough. I just upgraded the shit out of my starting axe. I can't stand the axe. is so slow. Really? Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I used the axe. I put on the uh, power attack on one enemy that swings straight down that isn't the circular one. Okay, mm -hmm. that yeah. would have helped too, because also I just couldn't handle and, 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 the power attack. And, yeah. and then that power, that, that straight down power attack took a pretty decent chunk off, especially when I attached a fire cartridge. And when and uh, spoilers, uh, they reuse that boss. Of course, um, I couldn't imagine them not, frankly. But by then, I I had the polymer jet ability, where you spray goo all over it, <laughs> all over something, and it makes and it makes your elemental effects do more. Mm -hmm. Ooh! So I doused it, and then I used the frost the frost thing, which can freeze bosses if you use the goo ability on it first. Mm -hmm. And then I just ch max charge the shot with the fire cartridge, and that does more damage because of the goo. Um, I'm going to mildly spoil something that's maybe two hours in. You hit this pretty fast, guy, so this isn't huge spoilers. One of the coolest things in this game is that you can talk to dead bodies because the polymerization of their brain leaves their memories intact. And the longer time passes, the more corrupted their brain is. So you just have these conversations with corpses that don't even realize they're dead. Mm -hmm. 
And I love that element of this world because our main character is the perfect guy to talk to dead bodies. <laughs> Not one meaningful conversation. <laughs> it's so insane. It's so good. He just has this tone of like this perfectly conveyed meathead tone of like yes. I'm sympathetic but I am not equipped to deal with this at all yeah. I am the worst possible person to be in this situation I'm gonna try and fail let, let me yeah a lot of times he has two options like one's like suck to be you and others like <laughs> <laughs> oh that's interesting moves on right uh he literally is handling all of these dead people just lying around being having been murdered by robots with this polymerization, keeping their brain in a sort of alive state as they're just a corpse. And he handles this each and every tragedy because they're all so sad. He handles each and every one of them with the grace and emotional response of a man who found his roommate dead by trying to fuck a wall outlet and frying his dick off. Like literally that's level every time. He's just like, oh, sucks to be him. What an idiot. <laughs> it's like, dude, what are you, what? <laughs> it's, it's so fantastic. If this main character was different, I would have stopped playing by now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all I'm going to say about Atavikar. I really want the floor to stop eating my ass. Mm -hmm. And I really am considering turning down the difficulty because... Yeah, I, I didn't do like... it, but I should have. The fact Chris did it, and you're saying you should have, is only making me go, this instinct is correct. Turn down the difficulty and try to enjoy this game. Right, because like the fun okay, isn't had here's from, the from... Here's the, here's the vaguest thing I can say. Okay. Think about what 7th Gen games do when they run out, and then <laughs> consider whether or not you should mm -hmm. maybe lower the difficulty. <laughs> I kept thinking maybe if I played a little longer, it'll, it'll I'll get a better gun or my damage will scale better and c combat will get better. And then it'll click. That'll be the moment where it's like, now it makes sense. Everything they did. No, <laughs> so far. Haven't hit that point. One other thing. Cars are Dixie cups in this. Oh yeah. It's funny you hit two things and you're just like, it's blowing up. <laughs> It's it's really good because also the physics are really light on it, so you can run over like a thing and very easily flip the fucker. <laughs> yes, it's it's pretty yeah, funny. I got in a car once and went, "This is the worst feeling car in any video game ever," and then got out. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it. There are way too many times where I cracked up when I uh, the the animation for getting out of the car is insanely long. Mm -hmm. So you know your car is on fire. You have to slow it down so you can stop. Uh huh. You get to the full stop. You get out of the car, and then he has to do the full animation of shutting the door after he's out of it, even though it's blowing up. Right. So a lot of times, him shutting the door lines up perfectly with the car exploding. <laughs> you die. <laughs> this is just like those gas station footage things you see of people's cars exploding when they close the door. <laughs> yes. We're just talking about accurate representations of Russian-built vehicles. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> What's that car that's famous for blowing up? Is it a Gremlin Pinto. or a Kremlin? Oh, wait. No, um, not the Pinto. Uh, it was the one that uh, Ralph Nader wrote the book Unsafe at Any Speed about. Yeah, I think it is a Ford Pinto. I think you're... I think it's both. Maybe it was the Ford Pinto. Because there's the Ford Pinto, but I could have sworn there was something... It was a similar name to a Gremlin. The Chevrolet Corvair. Really? Hmm. I'm seeing a lot of cars pop up in chat, including a Tesla. Uh, <laughs> They're not wrong, but yeah. Anyway, that's all I want to say about it. Other than the soundtrack is good enough to listen to on its own. Oh, and the weirdest last thing I can say about it that I cannot say about any video game I've ever played before this. This truly is unique. The cartoons are great. They're just cartoons. Oh, they're real. The yeah, they're, the they're, they're from a. They're from a thing. Yeah, they're just literally cartoons. They were really they're like they literally Russian licensed. cartoons from the era. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm just watching these and I'm like, this is fun. This is more fun than the. And, combat. There, and there was a little bit of a fucky wucky because they accidentally put one in that uh maybe did not have a favorable caricature of a non-white person in it. Oh no! I haven't hit that one yet. <laughs> I haven't I hit that they, one I yet. Oh no! I think it got patched out. I I'm I'm not sure though. I did spend most of the time watching these cartoons being like, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. I wonder, I wonder when I'm going to hit the racist one. They wouldn't make a racist one for this. This is a stunning job replicating old animation techniques, though. As I'm just watching this. <laughs> the temporal AA fucks up the fucking cartoons, though, and it makes me mad. Because you watch a character who has a black outline do this, mm -hmm. and you'll see the 
last few frames. That's how CRTs looked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Okay, sure. All right. Thank you. Anyways, that's it. I'm done talking about Atomic Heart. Bob, did you have another game you played you wanted to uh, talk about? There's one thing I wanted to talk about Wanted Dead. There's incredibly spoilers deep, but I think is interesting that, oh. for a game that no one will play. Okay, well, I'm going to play the spoilers music. Here we go. All right. So Wanted Dead has the plot of every like cyberpunk thing of, hey, this is Blade Runner. There's these machines. There's an uprising. Like, it has that going on in the background. Uh-huh. They do a really interesting thing with what robots are in this universe. Robots are not robots. They are just people who have been human trafficked and had their memories erased and put in random robot pieces. Holy shit. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, that's a really interesting take on this. Too bad it's in this game where everything in the plot's nonsense. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, like... The end of the game. Uh huh. Is the main character remembering when she uh, turned herself into the human trafficking agency so she could get money for her kid? It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't watch any of that stream. This has hit me like a truck. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's neat. <laughs> that game has ideas. Yeah. This is, this is a game where you play karaoke. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh-huh. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I was like, no one's going to play this. I need people to know, so maybe they'll get someone interested in seeing that insanity. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We good? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, there we go. We're out of the spoiler segment. What did you want to talk about next? You got I'm any good, other I'm games? Good. Oh, that, you're that's all, it. It's all out of games. All this out guy. Of games. Played too much over Octopass. Didn't have time for other stuff. I played too much Puzzling Places and yet not enough. Um, hey, Agro, did you play anything we haven't talked about yet? Uh, just an inadvisably uh, large amount of um, No Man's Sky, which is just weird in VR. Oh, yeah? <laughs> like, it, it's weirdly like, oh, because I, I, I played it on the PS4 and then. PSVR 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, oh damn, this is that game they wanted to make. Yes! Isn't it weird <laughs> watching the game they wanted to make actually appear in the game you bought? I feel like this is the only case of this ever. I'm like, the menus work? I'm getting prompts to do activities? Is, is this an entire base building system? Yeah. I need to play that in VR. Uh, we specifically got a donation from a viewer so I would buy it because it was only $30 and hopefully it still is. Because <laughs> I haven't done it yet. It was like, yeah, what are you talking about, Deadfall Fantasy 15 definitely got to the point where that was the game they wanted to make, right? <laughs> Can we not punch on Luminous? <laughs> We're going to be doing that later. <laughs> I don't want this podcast to be a flat circle. Uh, I'm sorry. When we get to my segment, I still have to hit Luminous. Oh, oh my brain no. was like, what happened to Lumines? Ah. Okay. Um, well, with that, I guess we'll move on to Chris. Right, Agro? You yep. good? Okay. Uh, hey, Chris, what you been playing? So I've been playing this, this great game called Jabbing My Thigh with a Fork Over and Over so I don't order the PSVR 2. <laughs> That's a good game. It's a great game. How's that? How's that? <laughs> how's that going? I'm still winning at the moment. <laughs> uh, if you recall a while ago, years ago, I got a Mac to do a lot of my work on it and I appreciated it. But when I got it, I had such a good experience that was full of that was free from Windows fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. That I remember uh, Chris and our other co-host was really interested in getting it back. And I had to keep going, no, don't. It might have a mine like 10 feet in the future. I have this thing where I feel instantly guilty if anyone buys a thing because I'm having fun with it. Because then I feel like a weird shill and a liar. Right. I realize like some part of my personality feels like that. So, so Chris, I hope you keep up the good fight. VR2 is exactly as amazing to me as I make it sound, well, but it's a lot of money. If, if we get to May and your eyes haven't fallen out or some <laughs> kind of horrible trap has not emerged, yes. we'll see. Also, also, I paid my taxes already, and I, I need to recover from that before I can buy a $600 piece of consumer <laughs> electronics. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what I have actually been playing, other than playing a bunch of Atomic Heart, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm still going around in S ranking all the levels in Pizza Tower. Play Pizza Tower if you haven't already. I need to. It's twenty dollars. I'm turning the difficulty that game, that down. On gonna, I'm going to end up having. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna end up having like 30 to 40 hours in that game. Holy fuck! <laughs> Sometimes I don't even try to get S ranks. I just boot it up and I'm like, I'm gonna replay a level. Nice. See if I can do it real fast. Uh, but I, but I, I streamed and beat Saints Row Four. Now, when Saints, Saints Row 4 is the sequel to Saints Row the Third that they had to make with zero money because THQ robbed them. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it uses the same city. It uses, like, there's some changes, but not all that many. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of cutscenes or missions. It, it, it has some new guns, but mostly all the same guns. So, so the thing that they do is they give you superpowers. Right. This changes everything. I'm going to say something alarming. Uh Uh-huh. They should have kept going in this direction. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it is apparent from the third, and especially the fucking reboot, now that we have that to additionally add evidence to the fire, they just can't write like like a crime story at all. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. But Saints Row 4 is the writing is a lot better because they just like, no, we can just be goofy and have goofy things happen. And have yeah. characters say stupid jokes. <laughs> it It is funny because they like Crackdown 3 basically isn't real. There is no Crackdown series anymore. They could have taken that mantle. Right. <laughs> and it's funny that Terry Crews is in this game. So they lapped Crackdown 3 on having Terry Crews. Oh, that's funny. Because there was a character, there was a character in in Saints Row One named uh, Benjamin King, who was like, he he was the gang boss, the street gang boss that became a businessman and a politician. Mm-hmm. And he was voiced by Michael Clark Duncan. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. oh wow! Uh, and and he passed in like 2012. Yeah. So when they brought that character back for Saints Row Four, they got Terry Crews to be him. So it's not wacky comedy man Terry Crews. It's like actual actor Terry Crews. That's that's actually really cool. Right. That still works. <laughs> uh, and it's really funny because the other the other big, big cr- uh, crime guy in Saints Row 1 was a guy named Julius who was voiced by Keith David. Mm-hmm. But you kill the shit out of him in Saints Row 2. So they just put Keith David in Saints Row 4. <laughs> Keith David, because because the opening of the Saints man, Row Four Keith is Keith David. Yes, Keith David, the voice actor <laughs> or a real actor, because he was also in They Live. Yes. So the Saints Row Four opens with <laughs> you going to catch Bin Laden. Yeah, I of course, <laughs> flawless. Like it's not Bin Laden; it's like, it's it's the villain from the the quote unquote villain from Saints Row the Third, who who became insane, who went insane, became a terrorist. But okay. it, it's obviously meant to parallel because the mission is called zero saints 30 Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh so you do that mission and then and then you get elected president (laughs) (laughs) okay and and so keith david is your vice president (laughs) i literally keep it okay that's good that's really good uh but then aliens attack (sighs) and and I feel like Agro would fucking love the villain of this game because his name is Zinyak. And he's a warrior poet king. So he keeps it, he keeps like interrupting your radio calls to quote Macbeth at you. <laughs> <laughs> and he repeatedly talks about how much he loves Jane Austen. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Is he an alien or not? No, he's he's an alien. He's just he just loves human shit. He's very okay. well read. All right. <laughs> All right. So so he kid he captures you and, and puts you in a simulation, and that's the conceit of the superpowers and everything. You gotta you gotta fuck up the simulation to do the series of contrivances that don't matter that get you to the to the end of the game. And this is why, Bob, I'm saying Saints Row 4 is the sister game to Nino Kuni 2. <laughs> 
because you're the president of the United States who gets these psychotic. God. <laughs> uh, so you get you get super speed and super jumping. Uh, you eventually get gliding, which is not quite flight, but you go down at like a two degree angle. <laughs> so what? It you is got like almost flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Prototype. Yeah. Yes. Um. All the side missions, like all the side activities this time, because that's a lot of the game, because there's not that many story missions. All the side activities are really fun because they most of them involve these superpowers, which are the offensive ones are kind of bad. Like the the best offensive option in this game is buy buy the dual Uzis and max upgrade them. That's that's better than your superpowers. I, that kind of <laughs> makes sense at the end of the day. Yeah, certain, that's just true of real life. A certain mass of bullets will outperform a lot of abilities. <laughs> and this was the game where they started trying to do like ratchet and clank wacky weapons, and pretty much all of them are bad. Um, uh, except the one that is just called Murica, which is a which is like eight different guns duct taped together. And when you pull the trigger, it shoots a it's it's a flamethrower, a minigun, and a rocket launcher, and it plays it and it plays like a jingoistic patriot song as it fires. That's just the end game gun from the ratchets, right? Yeah, well, the, one of the rhinos, the rhinos does that. Yes, that's Jesus. really funny. I think from but three? all the others are pretty bad. Like yeah, the I dubstep gun, the dubstep <laughs> gun sucks. There's like a plunger gun that sh shoots that blows up and they do toxic gas and it sucks. Like the <laughs> only one that's good is the, is the knockoff of the Rhino. Otherwise just use normal guns. A lot of people are saying it's also like the Rhino and a uh, Kraken time. So Rhino 5. Mhm. Mm um Chris, I was busy so I couldn't type my elation into chat. Keep in mind, listener, the the the, the voice actor is Troy Baker. And of course, Chris has designed him to look like Jin fucking Karian. Yes, so and you can is... look a lot like Jin Kari in Saints Row 4, not so much in 3. This is already <laughs> just funny. It's already just funny. But he's wrecking ass through the simulation, and the main character just goes, have a fun time cleaning that. Oh, right, it's not real. Because <laughs> he's in a simulation. <laughs> and I lost it because Troy Baker's delivery nailed that line. And I'm just like, he was having so much fun until he realized no one's life was ruined by him blowing <laughs> shit up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is good because there's a running joke in the game where people call him a sociopath because this is the same guy as from the first game. Right. <laughs> and every time somebody calls him a sociopath, he like gets indignant and says, P I'm a puckish rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the yeah, the writing in this game is pretty funny. Even the fact how it ha it has a lot of Matt Hazard core moments, it's still very funny. Where uh, because you save all your all your friends from the simulation, and you and you're on like your spaceship, and it's just a parody of Mass Effect. God. So you walk up to anybody in the ship, and it says, uh, "Button one, talk. Button two, romance." <laughs> Oh my god, I think I've seen a super cut of this thing. And if you and oh, if you yeah. select romance, all it is is your main character going, uh, hey blank, wanna fuck? And them going, yeah, and then it cuts yes. to black. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's really good. Oh, uh, there is one really bad mission that is just a bizarre attempt to be a parody of Metal Gear. Okay. All like right. like you you're you're tr you're uh Going to rescue a character they introduced in this game who is not very good, who is an MI6 agent, so she's a super spy. And you have to do like a parody of stealth gameplay where, where the main character is like, can I just shoot these guys? And she goes, no, you have to shoot out the spotlight first and then shoot them. And if they notice you, they it makes the Metal Gear alert sound. But instead of an exclamation point, it's WTF. Okay. I get it. So that goes on too long. <laughs> uh, this is also the game where they bring back Johnny Gat. They bring him back to life. Uh, or actually, they, they, they retcon it and say he never died. 
weird because they say instead of dying on the plane Zinyak actually teleported down into the plane and said Johnny Gat you're so much of a badass with a giant cock you could single handedly prevent me from taking over the earth so I'm gonna get I'm gonna kidnap you now <laughs> That's insane. The dude was about to die. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because in, in Saints Row 3, like you're talking to him over a radio and you hear a, 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 an Uzi fire and then they just say he's dead. In this game, they show what happens <laughs> and he grabs another guy and uses him as a shield from the Uzi and <laughs> starts beating the shit out of the main antagonist of that game for the first chunk of it. <laughs> and before he finishes curb stomping him to death, Zinyak shows up and kidnaps him. <laughs> Okay, that's a, that's a fun rewrite, I feel. And they have a surprisingly decent looking, because the gimmick is you have to save all your friends from their simulations, which are their greatest fears, and most of them are just comedic. Like, um... Freddy Krueger, maybe? <laughs> this, this evil... The, Zinyak's MO, which doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't matter, because it's, it's a fucking... It, it, it's just a contrivance, is... Before you join the Empire, I have to break you by putting you in a simulation of your worst fear until you, you know, you, you break. Okay. So, like, uh, for Pierce, one of these other, one of your other characters who's like your merchandising celebrity guy, is he's, he, like, mascots dressed like the merchandise are trying to kill him. He's like, no, it, it, it's like the ultimate horror. You're trying to be killed by what you love. <laughs> Uh, and, th and that features a Ghostbusters parody where you fight a giant soda can that is uh, <laughs> that is that is uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. All right. Which is funny because you get Troy Baker do like almost perfectly doing. What did you do, Ray? <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> but uh, for, for and, and, and normally they're just normal missions. But for Johnny Gats, they do a, sa a Streets of Rage parody where it's a 2D beat -em up that they put a pixel filter over. So you're, e so you're even still your, your designed character. And it's called Saints of Rage. Okay. All right. And I it's mean really funny because you get super bit crushed Troy Baker because they super bit crushed <laughs> the voice clip. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's like, it's like even, it's like one step more bit crushed than Duke. <laughs> Jesus. Ah. That's, we got some DOS gaming. So it sounds like you're really enjoying this. Um, the, the, the last chunk of missions are kind of bad. Like they all just become just throw guys and guys and guys and guys and guys. OK, that's unfortunate. There's also a, there's also too many turret sequences in the back half, which I'm more tolerant of because it isn't every fucking mission like Saints Row the Third. Uh, Get Out of Hell comes out after this, right? Yes, and I also played all of that. I booted it up once oh. to see if I wanted to stream it, and I went, "No, I don't want to stream this because there's no there's no main story to that." Really? Oh, weird. Um, because they didn't have any fucking money. Mm hmm. So it's like, okay, we're just gonna. People say it's the same fucking map, but it's really not because it, it's hell. So like, all the buildings look different. There's floating islands. There's magma everywhere. It looks way different, even if the layout is kind of the same. Mm. But there's there's like three story missions and basically no cutscenes. There's a couple like motion comic cutscenes. So the conceit of this deal, the conceit of this DLC is, um, it happens at some point in Saints Row Four. Everybody on the ship is using a Ouija board. And then Satan kidnaps the boss. And Gat goes, oh, fuck, we're going in there. And goes <laughs> to hell to rescue, to rescue the main character of the Saints Row franchise. Okay. Wow, because looking right. at that as a like, out perspective, I didn't know they brought back the way they brought him back, get, right. or Gat, in the previous game. I right. assume this was to revive him. Right. But I guess not. Him escaping. No, hell. he was. Yeah. yeah. No, that he was already alive. Also, um, this was sold on disc. They made yes. a big deal of this. Yes, this was that's crazy. I think, I, think it was only, like I think it was only thirty dollars at launch. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, cheaper. But it was like a physical box you right, could go and get from a GameStop. Yeah, right. 
That was so weird. That's why I'm so floored hearing it has three mer- story missions. <laughs> right? Jeez. Um, I'm really disappointed they didn't make this a, this a full game. Because mm. this has maybe some of the... Get, get Out of Hell has maybe some of the most fun traversal I've ever played in a game. Because wow. it doesn't just reuse the Saints Row 4 movement. You still have the super sprint. Mm. But instead of the glide, you can fucking fly. Yeah. It's like glider style flight where you have to manage your momentum and you can dive and raise, but you get like pips that uh, that you upgrade along your health bar that are how many times you can boost to get a bunch of momentum. So if you want to climb and you lose a bunch of momentum, you can hit the boost button and get it all back. Okay. And a lot of the, uh, and, and the flying field, like you, it controls really tightly. This is really surprising to hear, right? <laughs> yeah, I was fucking stunned. Uh, and, and a lot of the activities involve using the flight really effectively. Like, okay, um, one's just like a checkpoint challenge, but one is capture thing, like catch things falling to the ground in this big area. Like, you don't have to catch them. There's no penalty for missing one, but the more you get, the higher a score you get. Because the conceit of this DLC is just the Satan kidnapped the boss so he could make him marry his daughter and invade heaven. Cause only, <laughs> only the boss is enough of a chaotic badass to lead the armies of hell. Perfect. And the reason you have superpowers is because, uh, Dane Vogel, who is like the OCP executive from, from saints row two is just in hell, obviously. Cause you fucking kill him in saints row two. Right. Yeah. And he's like, well, it's good for me if you kill Satan also. So I'm going to give you Lucifer's ha- cracked halo. <laughs> and that is what gives you your powers. Damn. Yeah, this would have been awesome as a full game. <laughs> yeah, and it definitely was supposed to be one because they, in like two of the motion comic cutscenes, they show like the cabal of all the other villains in the series. Oh. And they're like, they're going to cause trouble. And then they never do. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> That's sad. Yeah, that's, that's so all this DLC actually is is like there's like a meter of like Satan's wrath. And you have to do these activities to fill it until he's willing to come out and fucking fight you. <laughs> that is surprisingly very open world eighth gen. <laughs> uh I did every single thing on the board in this game in one sitting. It only took about five hours. Yeah. All right. But yeah, it was a lot of fun and then ends with a really terrible seventh gen boss fight against Satan. <laughs> that seems fitting, but also <laughs> terrible. Uh, and then they and then they reboot the franchise into Agents of Mayhem at the end of the game. Oh, why? I... That sucks. I don't know. They they really should have kept going in this direction. Like I would have I would take a Saints Row 5 work because at the end of Saints Row 4, you also get a time machine. Oh, <laughs> and all, all they all they use it for is to to explain that Zinyak uh, has a collection of his favorite humans in like cryostasis. And one of them is Jane Austen, which is which is and they reveal that Jane Austen had been narrating the game. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have taken like some wacky Saints Row five where you're like the map is in some weird different era and you mm. have superpowers. Yeah, them doing their parody of Assassin's Creed would have been really good. <laughs> yeah, that would have been hilarious. It, and I, I really didn't give either of these things the chance when they came out because I had hate in my eyes because I'm like, why isn't it two again? Mm-hmm. You fucked up with the third and then you fucked up again. Yeah. But I'm like, ugh. I would much rather have something entirely different that's good, that's good than them failing to make this other thing that I like. And, and now they got eaten by Gearbox and they're just going to make Borderlands guns forever. Yeah. yeah. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> uh, uh, Saints Row 4 does, but especially Gat Out of Hell, uh, have traversal that's a million billion times better than Forspoken. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it's running real fast and gliding. It's the same shit. <laughs> yeah, Forspoken really did have like some of the worst open world traversal. Yeah, I hated it. Ever. I thought like, it would be really cool eventually, but I just didn't. Mm-hmm. Like, 
guys maybe uh here, here here's our here's our open world traversal game oh what kind of environments do you traverse on mostly open fields with <laughs> with tiny little rocks to trip you up a bit right <laughs> and a grapple yeah. shot that works on some things <sighs> did you have anything else to say chris no nah, that's it i'm trying to think if i played anything else no i did not okay you know what that means that means I need to get the Podlord song ready because that's right. It's time for. Wait for it. The Podlords. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Podlords, baby. Podlords. Crispy critters. <laughs> <laughs> Shit on a shingle. It's the Podlord. <laughs> Yes, that's probably right. We're going to see. <laughs> you just see how this. Yes, that's right. It's the Pod Lords. Pod Lords such as E. Lee Broyles. Hashtag Limbus Company Sweep. Wish it wasn't a gotcha. Red Blaze 27. Suzu Shiro. BN12, Shiba Yagato, goodbye Babylon's Fall, you were a nightmare to look at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad they got you with the Magneto helmet. <laughs> you look like such a moron. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. <laughs> Charles. Charles. <laughs> 101 Shades of Wonderful Remastered, WTF, Spider-Man, Adraco. Seven Gen was so bad that people have subconsciously forgotten about the use of JRPG, parentheses, derogatory. Attention, fellow podcast listeners, this Vasto Pod Lorde is eating beans! <sighs> LGTV. <laughs> DFW3K. The last month or so in the Pod Lord segment. Uh, oh, <laughs> please. Let me Silly Dillo. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny Mew Kristen Kyle Bjork There is no bit Bits are for people who don't have their external hard drives randomly break Iron Aggro Blig de Blue Schlig des Poo Monster Hunter Ryzen and Raiden Waking up after chapter one of Libus Company feels like <laughs> That's pretty esque. <laughs> Look, Limbus Company is just a gotcha game where you spend money to roll to give your character schizophrenia. <laughs> In today's Arankar Encyclopedia, we discuss this new Arankar. His name is Dio Tonto. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah! I like the tiny Jinkaria drinking wine. It's so good! Drinking Peepsy for a whole month to see if it reverts the chop goblinification. Good luck. I don't think it'll work, man. I don't think it'll work. Indigo Sights. Drive Typecast. Evil Lucario. A raccoon that is clearly smarter than that so called next raccoon, Podlord. Is this a raccoon? Also, play Paradise Quill or Super Rad and Criminally Underappreciated. It is not a raccoon. It is no, the, it's search, the evil criminal. <laughs> the search continues. <laughs> the Super Mim. Like a Dragon Ishin is one of the video games of all time. Sarlene. Timothy Fister. <laughs> <laughs> You're in for a fistin'. <laughs> you ever yeah, feel that's, like that's, a goat? know. That's, that's, that, that's uh, the main character of Pizza Tower whenever you go into a boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> you ever feel like a game you a play actively disrespects your time? Lobotomy Corporation is pretty neat. Pleochrome. 
Krungle Spum. No bit this week. A massive power outage forcing me to leave my home, resulting in me getting COVID after three years of being safe. Hi. Oh. And then it cuts off. This is the worst Podlord arc ever. Oh, I am so sorry. That sucks. God. Is, 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 is the cure eating seven corn dogs? <laughs> I mean, clearly not. <laughs> Troy Baker's like, eat these dogs, eat all of them. <laughs> ah! Yeah, that's me. As soon as we're done with Big Thing, that is me. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Capcom presenting their new original female character for Devil May Cry 4. <laughs> That's her. Uh, oh, yeah, God. Very original. Uh -huh. Very original. Yeah, God, the outfit and everything. Uh -huh. the no wonder they cast that, that the way they did. Yeah. <laughs> they don't leave no mysteries. <laughs> there is no war in Astacassia's school of technology. Boop. They found his flash drive. He was left without a quip with my cellmate's grit. He grease the, through the bars all slip. <laughs> so so is Batman villain Randy Pitchford just like Clayface but with grease? <laughs> Kind of. Just put some dawn on him and he disappears. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like that's giving Randy too much credit. He'd just be like an extremely sweaty killer moth. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Thank, you. Here. <laughs> Thank you very much for the pod lord. Thank you, pod lords. Thank you, pod lords. Thank you, pod lords. Thank you, pod lords. And if you'd like to become a pod lord, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to many benefits, such as early access to Chugging Bleach and Pokemon Go to the Movies, our two monthly anime review podcast in which we review five or more episodes of Bleach or a Pokemon movie every month until we're all dead. You also get extended cuts or cut content from other shows we do when the, indeed that exists for you to be given it and a patron exclusive show one a month where you get to vote on what good or bad like biodome thing we have to watch and then talk about <laughs> and if it's a bad thing you get a commentary track and those are never publicly released so if you there's like 40 fucking five of them there are so many waiting for you there's so the many Patreon commentary you've never tracks contributed before you also get access to Isolation 119, an incredible film that we literally have the distribution rights to <laughs> the Patreon. What other Patre Patreon gets you a movie? I was thinking about it the other day. For $5 a month, we have the most value of literally anything on the internet. <laughs> it is insane. Go watch that movie. If you're uh, a patron, it's just sitting there for you. Isolation 119. Humble Bundle's not going to get you Isolation 119. No, it ain't. That's true. Uh, that's patreon.com slash GB podcast. And if you don't have any money, it always helps us immensely to tell your friends, spread the word, like this video on YouTube right now, review us on your podcast app of choice, rate us on Thursdays uh, before Twitch removes that feature. Uh, thank you. For, thank you very much for all the support. Patreon.com slash GB podcast. Patreon.com slash GB podcast. I appreciate that Chris cleared up one thing there. If one of us dies, we still have to watch the, all the Pokemon movies. It's not until all of us <laughs> die that we can stop. <laughs> There's only yeah. one of us left. <laughs> what, is, what, what is that? Um, what is that? What is that <laughs> European play? Oh, where, God. Uh, um, it. I should know this. Dinner for one. It's dinner for one. Where, uh, where the old lady is celebrating her 90th birthday and invites her four friends but she outlived them all, so her butler has to fill all four roles. <laughs> that, that's, what's that, that's what these podcasts will be like 40 years from now when we're still doing them. <laughs> she was like, I had to hack in to upload this episode. Anyway, here's review 20 of Pokemon <laughs> Go to the movies. The impressions get more and more deranged and off base as the years go by and the brain softens. <laughs> We got news. Uh, Mario Kart 8 DLC Wave 4. We got a trailer. We got a date. Uh, that is coming out March 9th. I'm really happy they gave me this date because I found myself in the last two weeks going, when is it? When is it? 
Oh, it's the day before Mario Day. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Well, Mario Day has the trailer for the Mario movie. We can't That's double true. With that. You want to want to get on top of each other like that. That's going to confuse people. Um, that DLC looks awesome. They have some good picks. Um, and also, Birdo. Birdo not being yeah, in before now. Uh, I can't believe that Birdo wasn't in already. Right. News bullet number two and probably the most important today. Uh, somebody leaked the information about the thing from the Pokemon Direct with the DLC mm -hmm. for Scarlet and Violet very accurately days in advance and says, with DLC 2, they're doing a graphics update for a model of Switch. And I'm like, that's like winter. So that would line up with either the very end of this year or the beginning of next. Is this... Is this legit? Right. And then we had more information come out later. Yeah. Yeah. And then Nintendo knocked down a, a, a hardware leaker and made the form he posted on take down everything he had ever posted, I think. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm turning in, I'm turning into like white beard from one piece and just screaming that the switch Two is real. <laughs> <laughs> This is insane. I didn't expect a confirmation oh. through a Pokemon leak. Does that mean I have to be Chopper? Others? I don't like this. <laughs> I think Bob needs to be Chopper. Chat, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Chopper wearing the dog hat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he, Bob could be one of Law's guys that they have similar hats. Uh I will go ahead and read the leak verbatim. I'm a programmer at a Pokemon outsourcing company. My English is very poor, so I use a machine translation to complete this post. Worth noting, this post is on the 24th, and the direct was on the 27th, I believe. Uh, the theme of the DLC is hidden treasure of Area Zero and Hexacon, in quotes. Uh, version 1.2 includes dressable clothes as a reward for DLC purchasers. Will include, and then these are different names for the legendaries here, which are really hard to say. Uh, I don't know their Japanese names, like the original Japanese names or the translations of these, but they follow up with these are Paradox Suicune and Paradox Verizian. Uh, <laughs> here are the types for each of them. A mystery Pokemon with a green mask, special terrestrial appearance. The third legendary Pokemon is a large blue turtle. And the final line, we are working on a graphics enhancement patch for the new Nintendo Switch models that will be released alongside DLC 2. Man, imagine that game looking and running well. I do every day. Because it's such a good this, game. This not only confirms that the Switch 2 is real. Very important. <laughs> it confirms it has backwards compatibility. Hopefully. Hopefully this isn't a compatibility patch. I would assume the Switch 2 has back compat. Right. It'd be crazy for it to not. I, 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 I can't see a world where it doesn't because Nintendo when physically possible, because they do so much weird shit, when physically possible, their stuff is always backwards compatible. Yes. And sometimes when it isn't physically possible, like the Game Boy Advance have a slot on the DS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that ruled. I, uh, I see Viridian JG posting a thing in the chat talking about Chinese worker at a Nintendo manufacturer leaking on a forum and then having it deleted. I believe that's the Chris thing Chris was referencing. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. It's... It's it's looking real, you guys. That Finally. fucking rules. Finally. Uh, let's bust through the Pokemon Presents right here, right now. Sure. World Championship is in Japan, Yokohama, for the first time ever. Yeah, I thought that was pretty weird. I, 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 how did that not happen before? Well, it's very global. It's glo it's it's actually global, not uh the X anime global, <laughs> which means Japan. <laughs> uh, Pokemon trading card game classic question mark it's some weird like fancy board and cards you can buy as a set yeah it's, it's, it, it, it honestly looks really sick it it's, does. it's <laughs> sick pandering that's gonna rob me yeah they didn't mm. even say how much it's gonna be i bet that thing's like 500 dollars or something ludicrous oh god no please <sighs> netflix series about pokemon concierge uh service it's stop motion animation from dwarf studio did anyone look up what they've done before they did another netflix stop motion thing um called Rikamon something it's like about this uh 
stop motion girl who lives with a bear that just appeared in her apartment. It looked oh. really neat. That sounds cool. Uh, Pokemon Unite's getting Zacian, which I'm still not sure how that's said. I never heard anyone speak the name officially in a game. Wonder why. <laughs> We Pokemon Cafe Remix is getting ninth gen starters added to it. Yeah, you That's only get cool. to pick one. <laughs> the statistic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now to the real, real news. Ready? Pokemon Sleep is real. <laughs> Are you ready? It's, 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 it's wild it's, that they showed the uh, professor and it's just Eric. <laughs> oh no! One second. One second. I don't remember. Stop, Google this. Pokemon Sleep <laughs> Professor. I'm sure it's not that similar, right? It's got to look different from Eric. That's pretty different. The hair is gray. It's like Eric in, uh, I don't know, 20 years. This pretty Eric core hair, though. You're totally on the money there. If they just gave him the full goatee, I feel like it could nail it. Uh, yeah, Pokemon Sleep is real. Um, you t turn on your smartphone and use the app and stuff it under your pillow and it'll keep track of your sleep and then do things based on that. The weirdest part is when they announced Pokemon Go Plus Plus. One plus is words, letters. The other one is the symbol. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, this is sadistic and makes no sense. So it's like Pokemon Go Plus where you get this little fob to hit the button on so you don't have to spin an app on your phone and you can do it while driving. You should still not do it while driving, but you could do it while driving. You could do it while biking mm -hmm. because even biking is you fast do enough to trigger. While driving. That's true. They Just can't briefly. stop. <laughs> I have the power of a god. Uh, but this is like that, but bigger, and it has a huge glowing button, and it hooks up with Pokemon Sleep, and it makes Pikachu, who's trapped in it forever, sing a lullaby to you. And I'm like, that's sadistic. I'm trying to sleep. Shut up, Pikachu. What's wrong with you? And he could also be your alarm clock. Just like, no, we can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> Pikachu needs to hit harder. Does he literally electrocute you? That'd be cool then. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Just tase me <laughs> once a morning. Yes. Hurt me more. Uh, that comes out July and costs way too much. Bob, how much do you think it costs? I, I already know, so you can't ask me. Oh, okay. Agro, how much do you think it costs? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's Pokemon paraphernalia, so you, those numbers don't actually register when you see them. It's just the word yes. <laughs> Uh, so Bob, correct me if I'm wrong. Fifty-five. Yeah, fifty-five fucking dollars. Oh, that's is, less than I would have said. It's five dollars cheaper gonna, than a game. <laughs> I was gonna say eighty. Yeah, a lot of chats blow it up with eighty-two. This thing, fifty-five bucks, is a lot for a thing that just has a button on it. Right, like they did that. I don't. How much was the Pokeball? Was that how much? Eighty or? 100? I don't remember. It pissed me off. Right. That's all I remember. Mm hmm. Because it was enough to piss me off. It was up there, though. Yeah. Because he's talking about the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Pokeball. Yes. That came with the Mew. That came with the Mew. Um, we already talked about it, it because we read the leak. <laughs> yes. But yeah, new Paradox Pokemon. Walking Wake, which is Dinosaur Suicune. And Iron Leaves, which is Robot Verizian. Okay, we got to have the conversation. Bob, which of the two is cooler? Walking Wake. Uh, aggro? Uh, yeah, Walking Wake. Chris? Walking Wake? Look, all I'm saying is if you chrome up a great design, it still looks great. I'm going with fucking <laughs> Verizian. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm I'm the weird one here, but that thing looks sick. Uh, you could get yeah. them from Terror Raid Battles that end on the 12th. So you better be fast, because those Terror Raid Battles require you to have beaten the game. <laughs> And to be good at the it game. It would be really good, yeah. I've been watching Bob grind a bit. Yeah, I, I did a little bit of that. He's getting there, guys. He's getting there. Speaking of getting buff, I didn't mention this is a VR segment meant to mention this. In my life, when I get fit, it is a general fitness. So it feels truly psychotic over the last nine days to have gotten so fit in exclusively my arms and pecs while the rest of me is in shambles. I'm like, I feel like a cartoon character, like fucking Popeye with his giant fucking arms. Yeah, you have anchor arms now. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. It feels weird. Anyways, glad I got that DDR pad over there in ring fitness because I really need to use those. <laughs> this is fucking bizarre. Anyways, uh, what, what is this connect to Pokemon Go soon? Oh, you're talking about the Yeah, the you can connect. To, no, you can connect. 
you connect the, oh. the Pokemon Scarlet Violet to Pokemon Go. So that way you can get score cards. And you can also get the Gimmagool. Yeah, and, I guess you can get Gimmagool through that too. if you find too. enough of them, you can get Goldengo? Yeah, that that evolution, which is very strange. <laughs> it's great. It looks like an Earthbound enemy. <laughs> it does. <laughs> If you send enough postcards, you get this freak. <laughs> uh, home is still coming. They say it's early this year. I looked at a fucking calendar like... when they said early this year, and I'm like, that that's ended. I know. I'm like, I can't. Uh, we're in the third month. I feel like we can't say it's early anymore. Yeah, the first three. Not by the end of this month. Right. Once we hit like April, have... fuck you. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and then we talked about the DLC, uh, but the, the hidden treasure of Area Zero. It's $35 for part one and two. Mm -hmm. Part one, the teal mask, comes out fall this year. Uh, you visit Japan. Part two, the indigo disc, comes out winter this year, which I guess means also that next, early next year. Right. Um, <laughs> and you transfer to a new academy. These look awesome, and now, uh, finally, I need to go play the DLC for Sword and Shield to build up a frame of reference of what the Pokemon company thinks or what Game Freak thinks a DLC should be at all. Yeah. So that way this can blow it out of the water. Because let's be real. Do any of you see it being as low rent as the DLC for Sword and Shield? I do not. No, I feel like there's no way. No, probably not. But I do need to go play that. Uh, this comes with new uniforms and... He's swinging. <laughs> Zorark, which was really funny. I can't remember how the guy in the uh, Pokemon Direct pronounced it. Hisuian? I don't know. <laughs> Something Anyways, like that. Hisuian Zorark uh, for early pre-orders. Uh, who wrote this parenthetical, Bob? <laughs> that was me. Okay, would you like to read it? Uh, they didn't include Sneasler because they're cowards. <laughs> okay, thank you, Bob. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> Dumb name aside, I think, I think Sneasler rules. I... I uh, I made Dan very angry because before he left, I was joking about how they're going to add the Weevler. Yes! <laughs> and he was very upset. I was like, what do you mean the Weevler? Is it one enough? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 we get a second one. And it's the evolution. It's the Weevler. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, let's move on from that. Weirdly enough, I'm going to put both the blocks of news together. And run away. Bob, give us the Final Fantasy 16 news. Sure. While I run away. They they did a bunch of like demo releases. There are 45 minutes of gameplay or so out there and did a bunch of interviews. So we found out there is a demo coming for this game two months or two weeks before it launches. So we get to try it oh. then. There is a regular a 4K mode that's 30 frames per second and a performance 60 frames per second mode. Thank God. I really didn't expect that. Yeah, I don't want to play an action game as, at 30 ever. I don't want to play any game at 30, if we're being honest. I, I feel like I'm yeah, just done if we're, if we're being, if we're being brutally honest. Uh, it's going to have a new game plus mode that's called Final Fantasy difficulty, where it's harder and they rearrange the enemies. I think this is really good, but I'm like, that's a weird name. <laughs> It also has an arcade mode where you replay old stages uh, to get higher scores and can share those on leaderboards. This is strange. N never going to look at that, but sure. Yeah, I'm like, this doesn't seem like what you expect from an RPG. <laughs> uh, the PC version is coming, but it's not going to hit after that six months of exclusivity because it's going to take them longer than that to make it. Which... That kind of makes me very happy. Thank God. Focus on one platform first. Yeah, that, you know, they've raised it like this. I'm like, I don't even know if it's good. I kind of doubt it's coming to Xbox after six months either. Because it sounds like, yeah, we're optimizing I mean, this for PS5. Final Fantasy VII Remake never came to fucking Xbox. Right? Like, it's just one of those things. Final Fantasy XIV still not on Xbox. It, it seems like it's just never going to happen. Um... They say that the plot will be complete, feel finished, or finished from beginning to end and be co comprehensible. What a sad franchise that they have to announce that. Yeah, I, I'm glad they said it, but it, it does really <laughs> show where the series has gone. What, well, dude, I was just going to assume it would. I don't need them to tell me this one won't be on fire. It's on a different engine. Yeah, it's like... 15 is so rough with this like saying that's a fully linear story that you can understand is a stretch the, even the 13 franchise like 13 was 
comprehensible, but the end of well, thirteen two definitely wasn't. Right, I was going to connection to the to the third one three, aren't there. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> It sure is a game they changed the ending of so it could tie into a game that wasn't a 13 game until it was. Um, I still like the 13 games. I really want to go through those. I don't yeah, know if the, anyone will tolerate it. We they, stream we stream Final Fantasy 13 once a month on the 13th. <laughs> every month. No matter when the 13th is. Okay, big thing's done. Bob and I have to go. And, <laughs> uh, 13 is like this, this weird thing of like it, there's all these good fe- points to it, but it's still such a disappointment. It's, oh, yeah. it's the beginning of, we don't know what towns are. Why would you want those? Right, you can't make things the <laughs> we most We don't gorgeous. have any fucking money to have towns. <laughs> right, you can't make things the most gorgeous thing ever and a giant expanse, because technologically, those consoles couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And production-wise, it saves you from not having to do that. You know, that much insane amount of money going into everything. Uh... What's up? Did you have more 16? Yeah. We okay. also found, or since they released so much gameplay of it, it's like very clearly just, just straight up an action game. Yeah. Um, there's nothing, no other weirdness to it, I guess. Like they aren't even trying to pretend it's not an action game. Right. Because with like 7 Remake and I guess with 15, because they said that this is the first tier action game from Final Fantasy. I'm like, looking around like what was 15 then <laughs> yeah i was like what uh, bad i bad? know right? we can't just pretend. Look, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be real <laughs> genre bad if i have to ho- if i have to hold a fucking button to do a chain of regular attacks that isn't an action game <laughs> part of it was like i feel like kingdom hearts had to have had that mode at some point it feels like a franchise that should have Huh. Just the you don't have to hit it repeatedly. Just hold the fucking button. Yeah, they, and he'll do a cool. Not by default. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, not by no. default. I was just thinking, don't they have a mode for that? It feels like they would, because even fighting games got that idea, kind of <laughs> with the auto right combo, the auto combo stuff. Yeah. Feels um, like you would have done that by now, huh? But yeah, actually, the combat looks pretty fun. Like the, yeah. it looks like the dodging works well. He has a parrying, and he has a block, and he has. A standard set of attacks that look like they're quick and can be dodged out of. Mm-hmm. This might be the first good action game they've ever made a square. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Uh, did anyone have on their bingo card Final Fantasy 16 is just an action game? Because I don't <laughs> like I've been a fan of Final Fantasy since one. And while I've seen this franchise go through a lot, I didn't see is just straight up an action game. Mm-hmm. It, where I was talking about the arcade mode and stuff, too. I really, it sounds like it might just be a structure kind of like an action game. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just uh, they did, they did confirm levels. that there's like, there's going to be like hub areas. Yes. Like they okay. said that they said yeah. explicitly, this isn't open world. They were like, it's not open world because surprise open world annihilates the story. You can tell a lot of times. Mm hmm. Uh, which makes me think it's going to be structured like, okay, here's this area that's going to have some side quests. And then this area that's going to have some side quests. But I'm sure, like, once you get into, like, the... Co- they will be, like, combat dungeons, like a Yakuza game, almost, where it's like, this is just an action game level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Or, like, Gears. <laughs> you remember Gears 5? No. <laughs> that, no, it can't be like that, because that would imply the existence of a giant, open, empty world, which I don't think this is going to happen. No, there's no way they would do that to this. I would literally cry... That would make me so sad if this was Gears 5 tier of big open world. Um, basic, <laughs> thankfully, they said, no, it's not an open world. We're not even going to pretend. Um, my, my expectations, like my bar for this game, mm-hmm. is it needs to have the main story and whatever and be good and take us to exciting places. But I need side stories that have really good heart and ideas in them, like Xenoblade had a lot of. I know, right? And like That's, that's the what bar it really now. needs. And yeah, I am worried because it feels like this game is going to be really dark in a way that's not going to let them do that. But who knows? They, there are some quotes they, in there that make it sound like, yeah, they did address some hope that. and some light. And it's like, right. But do you mean like there's a hopeful moment in a, all the strategy or do you mean it's lighthearted and then that contrasts the tragedy? My whole leg won't rot off, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm hopeful. I- Fort, like again, this is this is the 
the, the 14 director and 14 has a lot of really dark segments of the story that still has that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, so I, I mean, I, I'm inclined to believe it will. Yeah. And it's not and like they did. They did specifically, they did specifically say, yeah, there's going to be cringe lines. Like they specifically said cringe. <laughs> Yeah, like they're, there's gonna he's Clint, uh, Clint's gonna yell shit uh, that you would expect like a middle school boy to yell. Yeah, I'm really optimistic on this game being an enjoyable game for me. Mm -hmm. At the same time, when I see people who are into like older Final Fantasies being like, I did, there's nothing here for me. I get that. Yeah, for sure. It looks really actiony. Yeah, it looks basically nothing at all like what i expect from a final fantasy right that, that's true. but, but at yeah. the same time that's almost the final fantasy franchise's mo kind of now like i saw 13 and i'm like i i don't want to play that and a lot of people saw final fantasy 10 and were like i don't i don't want to play that i think that had a lot to do with the characters in 10 <laughs> uh i don't <laughs> think you can look at the combat or the world and be like that's not like final fantasy um, well, I mean, not anymore. Mm -hmm. That that feeling was stronger when it came out. The 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 way the, the it evolved, basic combat mm. <clears throat> felt a lot more extreme back then. Yeah, and the sphere grid was real extreme at the time. And then you had twelve, which had the which which was just entirely different. Yeah, t twelve then, is a really really weird creature. That is for certain. Uh, that's and then why 13, thirteen had like the gambit shit. To me, thirteen felt really normal. Wait, Gambit's 12, isn't it? Yeah, Gambit's 12. Uh, 13, oh, are Gambit's you talking... 12? Yeah, are you talking I'm about... I'm talking about um, paradigm shift. Yeah, yeah paradigm, paradigm shift. shift. We were shifting paradigms back in 7th gen. Uh, 13 felt, felt really sober after 11 was an MMO and 12 was what it was. <laughs> yeah, an offline MMO. Yeah, so 13 felt pretty normal in comparison to that. In fact, the only problem I had with its combat system was the fact that your characters would independently and randomly move towards and away from the enemy. So sometimes your healer would just be like doing a little di lap dance for the boss and i'm like he's gonna beat you to death and i will have zero frames to do anything about it <laughs> because there's literal travel time involved in how that combat system works the boss has to mm -hmm. move up to a character to hit them right so if my character my healer is like up on them grinding that boss could just go uh, and they're dead and there's nothing i could do i wouldn't be able to get to them to heal in time right uh, that was my only problem with that though yeah i mean i'll <sighs> It was more of the structure of right. 13 being hallways that was off-putting to a lot of people. Yeah, like I said, not having any sort of... Any side content, yeah. basically. Yeah. But, you know, I look back on 13 fondly because as Thor High Heels put it, it has the most beautiful skyboxes of all 7th gen, <laughs> all seventh gen. Yeah. It's a beautiful skyboxes. <laughs> Man, good thing the Xbox series is such a great way to, like play back compat for titles that are enabled mm -hmm. because the 4k 13 looks so good right looks so good it's so it's so cool that microsoft has a game subscription service and does not feel like going and getting more of those titles should be any level of priority at all and in fact doesn't even need to happen it's weird because everything i've ever said that's positive about microsoft is not a priority over there <laughs> it's uh like for you know uh, Chris brought it up. I'm not even sure if it was on content or just in a call. But Chris brought up the fact before these consoles were launched, and you can go back and listen. You can go back and watch my reactions to the PS5, you know, unveil. Mm -hmm. I did not expect Sony's performance to be at parity with Microsoft. And that was one of the, Chris, I believe Chris's way of phrasing it is like, that's one of the times you really actually were wrong. Like, really wrong <laughs> about this sort of thing. I expected them to have way better hardware. And then they basically come out the same, mm -hmm. like uh, in practical <laughs> cases. Dan, they're not the same. Microsoft's cost twice as much to produce as Sony's, <laughs> inexplicably. Yeah, it's almost they like lose they have $300 a... on the Series S and $200 on the Series X. And they said this six months ago. That's not right. at launch. That's six months ago. Which Meanwhile, Sony's like, yeah, we make like 50 bucks on each PS5 now. Yeah. That's truly <laughs> bizarre that they have such radically different cost of production when they're hitting about the same on most video games. In fact, uh, the architecture of the PS5 actually works out better for VR because a wider 
thing wouldn't be as helpful as a faster clock thing. You know, huh. when Sony directly talked about it, they were like, there are certain things about rendering a game image that are helped a lot more by being a higher clock rate. And VR rendering two entire viewports is literally that. Mm -hmm. So, and somehow cheaper. I don't, uh, anyway. Who knows? Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> uh, was that all the 16 stuff? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see that's the last bullet. I'm excited for Final Fantasy 16. I feel like what will probably happen is I will feel like I played a spinoff of Final Fantasy that was really great. Yeah, I... Because it's going to... I gonna, don't know why gonna, I don't have any sort of thing like, here's a Final Fantasy that's turn-based. Like, yeah. you could even do a spinoff of Final Fantasy if, you, if you're too ashamed of it being turn-based for that to be another well, game uh, anymore. Well, uh, as what came out today, apparently... Mm -hmm. uh, somebody dug into a lot of Japanese developer reactions back in 7th gen. Mm -hmm. So the reason we don't have turn-based games anymore seems to be Bioware's fault. Can we blame Bioware for what journalists said and did? Well, the founder of Bioware specifically did an interview where he's like, Japanese RPGs aren't evolving. They have that shitty turn-based combat. Westerners all hate it. And that like poisoned all their minds forever. Yeah, but yeah. that felt like the temperature of the journalism room back then. Like, it genuinely felt like all these journalists were brain dead, and they're like, I need exciting new ways to engage in combat. I mean, Dan, there's enough yeah, room that, in this pit that, that for That interview all of them. was yeah. cited. There's so. enough room. In yeah, it, like, yeah. It, 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 there's so much bad energy around this of like, you guys got upset that, that they were saying this about you, but then you heeded their comments. Right. It's like, what are you doing? Well, they took criticism to heart. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, like they felt like, okay, if our sales are lagging, maybe that's why. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I'm I, like aesthetically and in world building and everything else, 16 feels like a really cool Final Fantasy. Part of me is going to feel weird that it's so action-y <laughs> <laughs> when I play it that I, I'm just going to be like, this was awesome. I wish but other it's, it's people. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like I feel like the like the damage is healing now. We're getting these big uh, HD two D games like Octopath Traveler. Yeah, yeah. While not a triple A game, has money. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the, it feels like they're testing the wall. Like Yakuza is now a turn based franchise. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Even if they're also doing all these side games that are the traditional style. I, yeah. I feel like just within the next couple of years, some develop, some big publisher is going to take a swing at, no, this is just a triple A turn-based game again and it'll yeah. do good. And then the curse will be broken. Yeah. And like, I think like you're right. Yeah. I was talking about how weird 10 felt back in the day, going back to play 10 was like, wow, this is, this is an actual generational evolution of turn-based combat and this game structure that we sort of abandoned to go in a different direction. Like I, yeah. I kind of want to go back and try that again. I, I I do absolutely think the same thing as Chris of like everyone's just slowly been coming back to wait a minute Americans are buying these turn-based JRPGs mm -hmm. why don't we make a new one and I do think like there is a world where maybe something that is either a Final Fantasy 17 or equally high budgeted project is a turn-based RPG because I've been saying for years there is a giant audience of people who are super interested in your cool game that aren't able to do action games at all. Yeah, and if they is... can do it, they're not interested. Like, mm -hmm. you know how big Final Fantasy VII was? Part of that is because it's a game that anyone can on paper play because you're selecting options from a menu. That's a very easy thing to get in on compared to an action game of any sort. And And... And when you look at, like, the demographic of Square Enix's audience, like, it does trend to people who don't play as many games. Yeah. Who play fewer games, who aren't used to action games. It would mm. not surprise me if Final Fantasy 16 does not poorly, but more poorly with Square Enix's traditional audience because it is an action game, like, with, with the combat director talking about everything he learned working at Capcom. Like, if, if that doesn't eat into the audience who play these, who like plays Final Fantasy 14. Yeah, I think the best thing they can do at the end of the day is make the 17 a huge shakeup and go back to turn base. Cause like, you know, changing what it is is a core of Final Fantasy. 
it just feels weird when we've done two various levels of action game in a row mm -hmm. and these are the only two final fantasies we've gotten since seventh gen well other than the mmo but mmos are different than and that was seventh gen technically because it launched on okay the... so my statement's still fucking true yeah even even the <laughs> yeah it was on you can on play there. that on uh you can PS3. play that on ps3 until uh 2017 <laughs> until a shockingly could, recent date <laughs> and then you could still play it on and then you could still play it on ps3 just not the new shit anymore right but like yeah i i i'm really excited for final fantasy 16 i i'm hopeful that that will show up on my top 10 by the end of the year yeah i think there's a good chance um man it's gonna be i hope this guy is helping other parts of the company because it's going to be <laughs> really rough to go to final fantasy 7 remake combat after this <laughs> Well, they're uh, not. They're, they're going to be the same. They're right. not going to change that game's entire combat system. Oh, between remake one and two. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there could be enhancements. Yeah, you, you could enhancements you, like they could explain. They could explain. Uh, no, no, no. Block, block, sweetie. You, you, this isn't an action game. You're not supposed to dodge everything. Block. I feel like it's probably going to maintain a similar feel to remake one where it's going to be tied between two worlds of being really actiony and also turn based. Yeah, they they like saying that, but it's like. You you go turn you pause the gameplay to hit his super attack. What is right. God hand turn based now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be playing his cloud and select to spank Sephiroth's ass <sighs> and then send him to space. If only they made a good game. <laughs> yeah, why can't they do Square Enix? We're just fucking handing this shit out. <sighs> I I think one I, I really need remakes. to replay I need to play remake one with the knowledge of how to play it mm -hmm, and okay. see if that drastically changes my impression of the combat mm -hmm. i also think i hope Rema i hope reunion like telegraphs the the interactions more than the first game did in what way because there was because there was there's a lot of like interactions in 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 seven where it's like this move specifically ruins this enemy shit and they fall down and shit shit themselves oh, okay. and lose all their stun points but i feel okay. like it doesn't really telegraph those you have to find them out by experimentation like they're they're very rarely things you can easily suss out uh, I, you know, I'm just going to say it again and I feel free to like, you know, I'm going to put my foot in my fucking mouth here, but, um, I still don't feel quite yet. Like it's, we're sold on, it's coming out by the end of this year because they were like winter. Oh, oh yeah. Seven yeah, remake. Seven two. remake. Two. Oh yeah. yeah, seven, yeah. I, I, yes, I really reunion could Me absolutely too. slip. And I think that's Maybe a shame because but... I would have liked to have had two final fantasies that could have been on my <laughs> top 10. That would have been neat. 15 that sorry 16 uh-huh the part of the interview actually Bob's is already deleting 15 that's you know that's a fair response <laughs> it should be it's, it's, 15. A, it's I, a self I said this on, mechanism i said this on twitter they should just go to namura and namura and say make versus 13 just do it we'll call I mean, it versus 13 it'll have the same fucking characters we'll just pretend 15 never happened i mean yeah they they absolutely should do that. Like consoles are a lot more capable of doing that sort of stuff now. Yeah, you can even just you, leave off the thirteen, just be like Final Fantasy Versus, and here, here's right. that. Yeah, and then like a bunch of people will buy it, thinking it's a fighting game. Uh huh. <laughs> but yeah, no. If you look at the Versus thirteen trailer, a lot of the ideas you can sort of pull from what it's showing you is that it needed something more capable of scope. Mm -hmm. And modern consoles are so much more capable of that. You could do some really interesting stuff. I would really love it because I don't think people remember. I loved that trailer for Versus thirteen, the first one. Uh huh. I really loved the early coverage of the fact that game never came out, and then this weird fucking freak. 15 did in its stead was the most gut-wrenching thing and the worst part is like that city that you leave at the beginning of the game could have been that mm -hmm. but they literally blow it up it's okay you go back to the very worry, end it's blown up yeah <laughs> yeah you go back to you go back to the very end it's blown up they give you a bunch of side quests and i go i'm at the end of the game why would i do these yeah that's yeah, the that, reaction the, 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 the final fantasy 13 <laughs> paradigm of oh there's this big open world but but the end of the game is like right over there what, why would i want to wander <laughs> yeah, um, at least in god of war ragnarok when they're like here's the seven hour long side quest zone at the end of the game i don't know i'm almost at the end of the game <laughs> yeah because that's like the third time they've done that right <laughs> absolutely um but what i was trying to say the, the the director for this one or sorry the producer for this one yoshi p 
Yes. Yeah. He came out and said, this will not be delayed. It is absolutely coming out the day yeah. he announced. Yeah, absolutely. I don't doubt it for a second. Mm -hmm. Like, that was shown off really early for the PS5. That was in 2020. Yeah. And, and the gameplay here looks, looks still done. pretty far along. Yeah. In 20, like, the gameplay they just showed looks really solid, and it is two and a half years later. You bet your ass that thing's shipping on time. Mm -hmm. If it, it showed doesn't, us like I will be surprised. minutes of completed game. Like, right. you don't do that unless, unless you're in the QA stage and it's done. Part of me is like, did Forspoken getting kicked back give this even more time? Did somehow <laughs> that work out where God of War kicked Forspoken out of that slot? Forspoken pushed back slightly Final Fantasy 16. Huh. I, I mean, they're all technically released with, with Sony in mind. So right. Like possible. Sony does do management like that where they're just like, you need to not come out on top of God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> Uh, I don't doubt it. And then, and then it turns out, oh, that that didn't matter at all. No, 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 that wouldn't have shown up on sales. They, 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 they should have released it on top of God of War Ragnarok. Then none of us would have played it. Yeah, they could have just hidden it there. <laughs> I'm just seeing the edit of slow zoom on my face as sad music plays as I think about all the things in Forspoken. But we're this, gonna th we're this gonna... this interview did make me note one thing. Mm -hmm. God of War is once again the default action game. Yes. Because <laughs> they talked about this game in comparison to God of War, and I don't believe it's going to be like God of War at all. It's obviously much more like Devil May Cry because it has a Capcom guy in yeah. charge of the combat. But I'm like, like also you camera know movement that's, and other things. Yeah. You know that's the action game that is at the top of the pile right now. So that's what you're going to reference. I just think it's funny that we've now looped back. Yeah, isn't that weird? But yeah. this time it's earned, and last time it was. <laughs> I, I feel like and, and <laughs> we're in this weird place where God of War's at the top of the action game pile again, and Doom is now again at the top of the first-person shooter pile. <laughs> yeah, isn't that fucking weird? I hope that... I probably won't be able to do this. If Final Fantasy 16 has the, like, the way that the world works, the God of War does, mm -hmm. where they often opens up to those bigger hubs and have a bunch of things to do that are different and build out characters more, that'd be incredible. I feel like there's almost no, no way to no. pull that off. That game doesn't sound they, like it's doing that sort of style. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's what I... That's kind of what I think it'll be. Because they talk about, like, yeah, you have your hub and you get hunts, and you go out and hunt these dangerous beasts as a side quest, and that implies some level of being able to go out and run around without specifically being locked to the story. Right. Yeah, so hopefully that, that works out that way. Yeah, it, it, we are in an interesting post-open world area where we're trying to figure out how to bring the very few parts of that that worked back into linear first-person games. Mm -hmm. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. yeah. We're so it's exciting we're that we don't know what like, it's going to look like. Okay, mm -hmm. we have a couple of impressive open segments, but then we can still have set pieces and shit, and it's not just a, a million copy-paste things. Fuck you, Ubisoft. And, I, and the main storyline <laughs> can matter. The... I kept thinking of Bayonetta mm -hmm. when they started to talk about the way the boss fights work. Yeah. And just how a lot of them are going to be like, it completely shifts the way you play it. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, yeah, this is very inspired by that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, literally, there's kaiju battling in Bayonetta 3. There is in 3, yeah. yeah. Literally Bay the same idea <laughs> as Final Fantasy 16, where it's like, hit these buttons to do these special moves as the kaiju. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. But I'm, all, I'm always down for that shit. Just do it right and be like, Normal boss fight that's cool. Mm -hmm. Now big set piece boss. Yeah, yes. That's exactly what they showed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and as I said before, I'm really sold on the world. I'm really sold on the, the graphics and how it looks. Mm -hmm. And now with this latest thing, looks cool. I, I'm sold. And I'm going to be there day one. I hope... <laughs> I hope I enjoy the action gameplay because I'm not sure people have noticed I'm not an action game nut like Bob, even though I enjoy action games, but I I need them to be fun to play. And Bayonetta 3 was fun to play. Mm -hmm. It was everything else that was a problem. Right. There are there are some action games where I'm just like, I fucking hate this. Yeah. So I'm hoping. Yeah, it looks like it'll be fun to play. Like that's why I was saying this might be their first good one. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, even I have been intrigued by the footage I've been seeing. Yeah. It's like you have a lot of but will a lot it of be... different things to do. You, you looks like you can shoot magic like like pistols in Devil May Cry. Oh, cool. I'm like, okay. But will it be as good as the bouncer? <laughs> I just don't know, Dan. Uh, <sighs> and what are the show me the combo tree. <laughs> <laughs> 
I notice uh, you don't have uh, pressure sensitive commands. Yeah, it's here. just bad at that point. Without the pressure sensitive <laughs> buttons, why are you bother making it? Is that, that even an action game? I don't. <laughs> anyway, we gotta move on. Elder Ring DLC. Bob, what's the name? Uh, Shadow of the Ur Tree. Yeah, they, they announced it with a tweet like a couple days ago at two in the morning. And the press kit had a 20K by 20K image. <laughs> yeah, it's the only release. Someone releases... zoomed in on feet. It only releases one big image of. <laughs> I mean, that's. It, it, it's a practice <laughs> process by now. Like, what are you going to tell us? Here's a big image. Do it yourself. Yeah. Uh, I. Um... That is awesome. This is a really good week for FromSoft news because we got that. And then also Armored Core is sixty dollars, <laughs> and it's just like, hooray! Look at them making these amazing games that are only sixty. So uh, if you play, if you played Elden Ring, like with a bleed strat or a magic strat, you know one of the things people consider easy. Uh huh. Uh, get ready for every single thing in this DLC to tear your spine out <laughs> if you course. try any of that shit on them, because that's of course. how FromSoft rolls. Of course. I, I am pretty fucking good at games. Mm -hmm. There is very rarely where I am. I feel this bizarre. It's like this feeling of intense soul rending despair of like. I don't think this is an issue of practice. I don't think me beating this is in the cards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. And there is there is three FromSoft has evoked that feeling in me three times. And all three times I prevailed. But two of those three times were DLCs. So what you're saying is this might be the time that you enter that feeling and it and you do not prevail. <laughs> if if it's if it's on the level of the Bloodborne or Dark Souls three DLCs, which are meat grinders. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Then, then maybe like the only DLC I played from them, like all the way through, mm -hmm. was the Bloodborne one. And I did that New Game Plus, so it was even harder. And I actually really liked it. I didn't think that was an issue. I, I liked it. I liked it. But the, 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 it was just Orphan of Coast. Orphan of Coast took me like 150 tries. Yes, that did take a lot of tries. But I don't know. Once I got it, it actually felt pretty good to do. The, uh, the, uh, it, it did. It made me feel like a god king. But still, it took a long <laughs> time to get there. Uh, the other one was the final, the, fi the true ending boss of Sekiro, where it's four fucking bosses in a row. It has four <laughs> phases. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was... That was a little messed up. And then the entire last DLC of Dark Souls 3, The Ring City, that thing is insane. It's just, it's just nightmare trap after nightmare trap. It's like the Plutonia experiment of Souls games. <laughs> <laughs> this reference is for no one. <laughs> what uh, city uh, game uh, was that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a DLC. That, that's an expansion for Doom 2. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, Unrelated, there's like 15 bosses in Hollow Knight that made me feel that way. Jesus. Uh. <laughs> um, I see this next news, and I'm just going to say something real quick that I forgot to mention during Atomic Heart. Okay. I'm playing Atomic Heart. It's an open world, and I'm just open world. <laughs> yeah. And, and because of the tone and that and other things about the world building and the vibes, I just went, when the fuck is Dead Island 2 coming out? And then I went to sleep and I woke up to footage of Dead Island 2 on YouTube. And I'm just like, oh shit, oh, I need to stop oh. having thoughts like that. Well, one, la one last thing about Saints Row, because mentioning Dead Island reminded me. In one of the, the simulation is falling apart, look at our funny command line joke. Uh huh. Uh, there was one of the things was Dead Island cross Saints Row coming 2015 that obviously <laughs> never materialized. <laughs> I never will because Dead Island Does, 2 is not a thing. <laughs> yeah, COVID killed that game. It's going to be really sad Does, when me and Dan are just pretending to play a game all the way through on Friday. <laughs> we label it Dead Island 2, but we really aren't playing anything. Oh, God. Embracer now owns both of those again. They could do it now. The capture card just says no signal for an entire death stream. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so anyways, I, I just thought of that because of this next news, Bob, top of the list. Uh, the Wolf Among Us 2 got delayed to, out of this year. I forgot that was happening. I know, right? Payne was announced like two years ago. It was, yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. so now it will be three years. 
between the announcement and it coming out, which seems like a reasonable dev cycle. Right. They said that they don't even want to hold or like hold themselves to next year, but it'll be done when it's done. <laughs> But probably next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, the Telltale CEO, Jamie Otley, I think. Otley? 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 Uh, says they don't want to crunch to get it out this year. So that's why I delayed it. Like, okay, that's good. I forgot don't Telltale crunch. was still around. Yeah, they did that whole thing where they revived themselves. <laughs> yeah. They, y- like, you know, we were just looking at the ashes and heard resurrection. <laughs> it's just like, I remember they fired everybody. Like, did, did the team revive it or did somebody just own the name? A little of column A, a little of column B. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, some talent from are, old Telltale went there and others went, fuck that. Are they making that outer space Telltale game? Or is that some other branch of people from Telltale making that? Don't know. Okay. I don't know. The Expanse, you mean? Maybe. I don't know. Was that one of those that, Jeff Keighley shows where we saw three different games that were all space horror games? Yeah, I think the experience is getting a Telltale style Yeah, that's game. a Telltale thing. Okay. It's explicitly okay. a Telltale thing. Uh, let's go on to the next news. Uh, Grand Blue versus Rising. Rising. Uh, they announced a new character, Anela. Uh, she is some sort of sheep girl. <laughs> yes, Fantastic. she is one of the... I, for, yeah. I forget their... I forget the group's name, but there's like a group of 12 super badasses who are based on the Zodiac and she's mm. the Ram. Okay. Uh, in the... English, in English, she is voiced by Hatsu, who, uh... Oh, is that who Hatsu's voicing? What... Yes, who is the localization director for all the, uh, like, all the big X-Seed games and all the all the Trails games. And, uh, is I think is a is a goddess of cats VTuber also. Yes. <laughs> I, I Oh my god, her? Yeah, yeah. I follow I, her on Twitter and yes. uh, I, Twitch. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's awesome. This character's cool. I like how many sheep are popping out. Look at look at them in this image. Yeah. There's no, so many. It's all my all, all sorts of sheep. Oops, all sheep. Yeah, this is this is this is good. This is a good. Yeah, it sure is her. Oh my god. That's great, man. Been watching uh, her work her way up through voice acting for a very long time now. Oh, okay. So this is a feel good moment for me. <laughs> and <laughs> you I sh- love I- to see it. Yes, I do love to see it. Yeah, it's great how that that industry does see, feel like it's getting a lot of new blood recently. It's almost like <laughs> <laughs> Troy Baker traveled through time to cause COVID <laughs> to, to diversify the voice acting. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So he could give us the cure after the voice acting industry was fixed. <laughs> Troy, no! Don't do it! There's the cost, gotta be a Troy! <laughs> Troy, think of the lives! <laughs> and that's when he does the fucking smirk and throws the lever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next news story. <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> Would would we consider that hating or creating? Which of those? Oh god! Both. This is like the the flashback of Giant Robo. I just keep getting more context every time. <laughs> uh, did Did you know Noel North can or is doing a voiceover for his the book of the Uncharted movie? No, I, I thought didn't... that'd be interesting to bring up. <laughs> so, so there's a novelization of the Uncharted movie. Yeah, the Uncharted and the, film. For... And the audiobook <laughs> yes. is voiced by... That must be surreal. That like like I, he's either going to do like a really good earnest job, or it's it sounds really sarcastic and annoyed the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's a that's a thing that I did. <laughs> Oh, and the, this is the scene where he finds me on the beach. Oh, that's, that's a good scene. Here, I'll, and, and I'll read, I'll read Nathan my Nathan Drake lines bartends. Wait, what? And then Nathan Drake bartends for some fucking reason. <laughs> um, my other news, my last news. Uh-huh. Uh, Nintendo won't be at E3 this year, which I feel like we all kind of knew already, but they've made it official. Well, yeah. I'm glad they made it official. You know, it's important to make your breakups official up front and then and, and they'll still do a direct that week because they're little bitches and they'll like, win we just met no floor presence <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, well, it, they'll really always. fucking win if they announce the Switch too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they announce the Switch too, and we're going to see a lineup that's insane. It was Donkey Kong. Hey, Bob. Hey, what's up? Did you know we couldn't even escape this podcast? Did you know we couldn't even escape this podcast without <sighs> what? 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 Zat coming into existence no! <laughs> i appreciate that this is the chopper reference image you use professor bad vibes <laughs> that's the one <laughs> if anyone wants to uh here you go guys i'm gonna throw that into the chat real quick so you guys can retweet that and give it some likes that's really good the switch 2 is real <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh that's it for bob news right yeah <laughs> so wait one moment one moment we're gonna i feel like there's something in the horror that these two characters represent they kind of <laughs> <laughs> kind of mess you and aggro there's something <laughs> Don't you see, Bob? When I say gaming, I mean death. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what is the next news thing? It's Chris's news. Chris, take it yes. away. Uh, so remember during the Forspoken review we did? <laughs> Go watch our Forspoken <laughs> review if you haven't watched that. Where I said it'd be stunning if Luminous Productions made it to Final Fantasy 16 coming out. Yep. Uh, they're not. They're getting folded back into Square Enix at the in in May. And just for people who think maybe Chris is overselling it, I am now playing an audio clip of exactly what was said right now. <laughs> I will be I will be kind of surprised if Luminous Productions survives until 16 comes out. Oh like yeah. If Square Enix isn't just like, okay, this bomb, this was your shot, you're you're folded back in. Oh yeah, 100. <laughs> percent Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that was the. It's just so obvious that company could not survive. <laughs> you literally look at you literally look at Forspoken. And you go, no, no sane company keeps this running, right? <laughs> oh yeah, I guess that the, yeah. we could talk about the 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 engine thing with sixteen. Oh, what's the engine thing? Because um, they were asked if they use Luminous or unreal 5 for them they said they used nizer and i thought like a few years ago we'd already found out yeah. that it was the that crystal branch. tools yeah. yeah right yeah that's what i thought too but i saw i saw lance mcdonald and fucking uh fuck what's his name i don't know why i'm blanking on his name for once a guy from digital foundry oh um john lineman john lineman yeah um i saw them talking on twitter and they're like oh what is it what is it and i'm like I, was this not announced did they not announce that it was crystal tools <laughs> They did four years ago, and it looks like everybody just kind of ignored it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad to know yet again we're paying the most attention. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, hey, Square Enix is making a game, and it's on this engine. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, call, call us back in three years with the real engine. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, okay, what, seven, apparently, what 8th Gen did. What's up? Apparently in pre-production, they used Unreal 4 and then switched. That's bizarre. That huh. is bizarre. I guess it's a good engine to get things up and running. <laughs> you know, you could start working on animations and a bunch of other stuff while you're PC together. What it'll actually work on as long as you have a workflow that can, you know, take all your work and bring it over to the new one. That's true. Man. I wonder what it what this, this one grew out of. Like, is this what they've been using since like before 13? Oh, th this has to be Crystal Tools. Yeah, no, I'm saying what Crystal Tools is. Oh, like, is I, don't, it a situation? I, don't, I don't know if 13's engine is based on 12. I think it was like a huge rehaul of 10. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because 12 was different, wasn't it? It feels it. Hmm. Because um, keep in mind, 13 was a development parallel to 12. Yeah, and it was going to release on PS2. I still remember seeing <laughs> screenshots of that. I saw it in a book. That was really fucking cool to see PS2 Final Fantasy 13 as an image. Mm -hmm. Where you're just like, oh, shit. That's crazy. Yeah. That would have been awesome. It would have. Maybe it would have been done. It might have been better. Yeah. Too bad 12 took forever. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> probably, you know, that's a really good point. I never considered this until now. Is there a chance Final Fantasy 12 took so long they went, we can't release 13, 12's not out yet. So then they're like, push it back to okay. the next console. No, we still do not know what engine this game is on. Okay. I did more research. They just won't say... Weird. Which, and a, and a, 
it can't possibly be unity that would be insane yeah that would be completely maybe unreal. maybe sony maybe sony fucking gave them an engine could you imagine yeah it's decima here you go i mean like i i, I feel like that a lot of <laughs> it's these the spider sony engine. deals <laughs> Like a lot of these Sony deals are, are just them going like, we're not only will we pay you money for exclusivity, we will also aid in development. Yeah, a lot of that's on like art production side and cutscene direction and production side. You know, with the visual arts group and uh, PlayStation. What is it, Malaysia? Um, it would be crazy though if this was running on a Sony engine. If I was Sony, I would be like, hell yeah, it's running on our engine. Right. I, I have to wonder if this is something we ever find out or, yeah. or not. I feel like, I feel like we it'll may say find, in the credits at some point. I feel like we may find out manually if we don't find out through text. That's true. Even if yeah, they don't credit yeah, there's going to be a There's going to be a PC version. Yeah. So Lance it will be exposed. <laughs> yeah. Turns out if you actually buy RPG Maker, it's got some extra tools in it. For doing 3D. Uh, anybody have anything else to say about nope. uh, Luminous Productions being destroyed? <laughs> Rest in peace, you won't be missed. <laughs> right? Hit him with the hammer. <laughs> uh, IO, the Hitman devs, are making an online fantasy game. We don't know anything about it. They said it'll be a million years before it's out. That's cool. that, That's that story. Great. That that Weird. hits a, that hits on the same level as Sony London's making the fantasy game, and I'm like, okay, cool, great. See ya. <laughs> uh, so Shigeru Miyamoto has been dropping hints that he might be retiring soon. That makes sense. He's absolutely ancient. Yeah, he's in his seventies. Is I think. he that old? I thought he I was in his sixties. I think he's. I think he's only in his sixties. I think he. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, mm. game development isn't easy. I right. can't imagine. Also, he's look 70. at what he's exact. He's 70 this year. Yeah, that makes right. sense. No, he's 70 last year, so he's gonna turn 71 this year. Right. That makes but sense. But the last he's time he old. even like the last time he even mentioned retirement in a sentence, like Nintendo stock tanked like 10. percent mm. <laughs> So yeah, at the just... most recent thing, he was like, "You guys don't have to worry if I retire. There's plenty of people here at Nintendo. Like he's like he's gassing up other people. Like he's basically telling investors." When I retire, don't get scared. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. He's handed all. I his haven't game. even actually worked on right. games in like years because I was doing the amusement park and then overseeing the Mario movie. Yeah, he's handed his main ser major series off to different I people. I mean, even to Pikmin Four isn't fucking him. Yeah, is it not? No. Okay, that's what, does, the only as thing far I as I know, he has no ties to Pikmin Four. Hmm. Like, we need the game to come out to be certain, but it didn't feel like Shigeru Miyamoto is here to talk about his amazing game. I don't know though. Just keep in mind, Pikmin what Pikmin Four specifically was definitely his baby at one point. Oh yeah, I mean when he announced it eight years ago. Eight years ago, <laughs> saying it was done. <sighs> but yeah, he handed Zelda off ages ago. He handed Mario off a long time ago too. So yeah, I'm 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 a, I'm a little confused. When is the Aonama switch? Is it Twilight Princess? I think it's before that even. Okay, so it's Wind Waker. Yeah, it might be Wind Waker. Or Majora. It might even be, like, Ocarina. No, it's not Ocarina. Okay. No, that's not. No, that's directed by me, though, no. But okay. I don't think Majora I, is. I the don't whole know point. I think was, like, really high in, uh, yeah. on the credits for that. So. Yeah, yeah, no. He came up through the ranks. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, he might have done Majora. My only question is, did Miyamoto or Aonoma do Wind Waker? Because no, I it, don't it, know. It, was, it was Ocarina at the time. He's the director of Ocarina? There's, Ocarina has five directors. And he's one of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and he was definitely, he was basically the main director on Majora. So yeah, it was a while ago. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> the chopper Bob is still over here. Ah! <laughs> so, uh, so Steam announced a change to their Steam key policy, mm. which is uh, they'll give developers 5,000 by default. And if you need more, you have to ask for them and they can, and they can say no. A lot of people were worried about that this was Steam Trot, like Valve trying to squeeze third party sales, like from Humble Bundle or Green Man Gaming or whatever. Mm -hmm. It turns out it's them trying to mitigate. Um, like, apparently, there's a lot of games on Steam that just cost like $1,600 on Steam, but everywhere else, they're less. 
<sighs> and this is and this is to mitigate those people to which I say, hey, Valve, do this thing called uh, curation and just kick those games off your store. <laughs> yeah, I was like, do this thing called blacklisting. <laughs> yeah. Man, that sucks. But uh, while while people got really fretful about it, 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 it does not seem anything has bad will happen yet. And uh, no offense to indie developers. Whenever Valve does anything, a lot of indie developers shit themselves and ask, act like the sky is falling. I mean, it's true. Like, yeah. I, I remember legit like meltdowns over that refund policy. And then it turned oh, yeah. out to not impact any of their bottom lines at all. I remember like Kotaku putting up like, we found 10 insane indie devs to go on tirades about yes. this refund policy. Like with one having a meltdown saying, I'm going to make a game with an unskippable three hour intro where you don't actually get to play. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Look, it didn't matter. Calm down. Yeah, no, the, it, I mean, that was Kodaku's uh, bread and butter is we're going to team up with these friends we have in the industry who are in the industry to possibly come out and say some things that are very anti-consumer because we hate our audience. <laughs> it, it's really hard when you have a narrow focus of coverage and you're a really shitty rag that like nothing alarming is actually happening for you to gin up controversy over. So you have to just be alarmed about regular things. Yeah. Consumer rights? Oh no! This is going to ruin the industry. Europe doesn't have a game d d industry, right? <laughs> I I, I want to leave the really funny one to the end. So oh, yeah, uh, do this it. is a report. <laughs> this is a report from uh, Warrior sixty four linked it, but it's like from a fucking Bloomberg or whatever. The EU will allegedly say they're okay with the Act of Blizz acquisition if Microsoft signs enough fucky wucky deals. So basically, it's Microsoft has to sign like a million fucking things promising to put everything on everything for them to agree for the deal to go through, which Microsoft will probably do because they're stupid. It'll get it done, I guess. <laughs> this is so, it, this acquisition is so bizarre, not just from the element of it shouldn't fucking happen. Corporate acquisitions are bad. It's like. It feels like on like the reason Sony like first of all I'm I'm still disinclined to believe it will happen because I feel like Sony knows better than any of us how likely it is to happen. Mm -hmm. Probably. And yeah. if it was likely to happen, they would have taken the deal already. Yeah, that's true. But there's also a thing called bluffing. That's true. There's also this weird element of like, okay, don't 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 put don't put. Call of Duty on PlayStation. Good luck ever recouping the cost of this acquisition. Look, somehow they're going to make money by not selling it on a platform where it's the second or third best selling game. They're going to they're going to make money by not selling it on the platform that uh, accounts for seventy percent of the franchise's sales. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, like... And since and since it will now be on Game Pass, uh, it, the whatever chunk of the sales are on Xbox will no longer exist. Yeah, and just to be clear, this isn't me saying so they won't do it. This is Microsoft. They pulled Starfield off of PlayStation. Yeah. Which is a much larger platform than the Xbox. Don't worry, Phil said it was never going to be on PlayStation, so it's fine. <laughs> I think yeah, he that, just walked through our face now. Yeah, it's, yeah. He can do that. I mean, yeah, he's been <laughs> doing that for about a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, longer, because he yeah. said that thing about fucking Bethesda's games were going to show up on everything, and then immediately... Uh -huh. The first thing they do is, mm -hmm. nope. Yeah, and then the thing you would expect the most to happen happened. <laughs> the biting them he in actually, the ass. I, the I saw references to an interview Phil Spencer gave this week, but I, the, the actual article is in the UK and it was paywalled, mm -hmm. um, where he was like telling people like, you know, even if the deal doesn't go through, the Xbox is going to be fine. And I'm like, did he just admit the possibility that it might not happen? Right. That yes. was the funniest part of that quote, because... What was it? Yeah, it, it seems so like it. I feel like the media has, in the past two weeks, has started to kick up the manufacturing consent engine. You know, when they start to lie to you to your face and get mad if you point out inconsistencies. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not. I, I can't. I can't see through the radiation and be like, is it actually moving more towards happening, or are they throwing a fucking fit because it seems like it might not. Uh. I, I think, if anything, reading the room right now, it is the most likely to not happen that it's ever been right now. Even yeah. if the EU signing on, that doesn't mean the UK CMA is going to allow it. Even that quote, as Agra was pointing out, from Phil Spencer openly admits the notion right. 
the possibility because you know elsewhere he's saying that will literally happen Mm -hmm. (laughs) phil's saying two different things to well three different things to three different groups you know he's trying to sell that activision's super important to microsoft and it's the only way to defeat sony which is really important it's really important that they come in first place that's what a healthy industry looks like when Microsoft comes in first place instead of third. Mm-hmm. Even He's though also... if you uh, look at the, according to Microsoft's own numbers, even mm-hmm. if every single person who plays Call of Duty on PlayStation switches, they will still not be in first place. <laughs> He's also trying to tell them that they don't actually care about Call of Duty. It's about King. But they're mobile games, remember? Yeah. So that has nothing to do with PlayStation's market share. They're also saying it's not about console hardware numbers, but the cloud isn't taking off either. There's no consistency in any of the statements Microsoft has made about the acquisition or the state of the market or their plans this entire time, except for one thing. One thing stood out in that document. I'm glad it stood out to Chris, too, because I saw his tweet where there's a part in the fucking giant thing from the CMA where it's like, our research shows that uh, console owners are possibly transitioning to a three to four year cycle between new generations. (laughs) No, they're not. And I'm like, Microsoft's actually going through with the series plan. Like we were talking about. There's not a chance. You don't think Microsoft's that stupid? (laughs) They lose so (laughs) much fucking money on them already. Are they going to lose even more to push out a slightly stronger box? They're going to have four years where they have the strongest console in the market. So that marketing they did three years ago will begin to start making sense. But everything will still have to run on the Series S. Yeah, but it'll run better on the Series X 2024. Like what? It'll be four. It'll be four K sixty instead of fourteen forty P sixty. Yeah. I want to be real. I can't tell the difference. No, most no, people. It, it's can't. still going to run on the Series S, but only the cloud version. <laughs> Don't Poor. worry. They'll have a sticker that'll make that very clear. Uh, they always wait. Well, they don't need a sticker because it's a digital only platform. <laughs> it, it's more like a like a PNG. Uh, getting a question in chat if we saw the uh, Microsoft subpoena Sony. Yes, I saw that. Did anyone else? No. They asked for a laundry list of information that was just like, um, you have to tell us literally everything you're doing over there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah they were asking for like ago, internal they? private documents. Yeah, it happened I mean, we brought today this up a couple to, weeks ago, uh, Sony, but I think they ruled on it. Mm-hmm. Sony oh. has to, uh, Sony has to reveal all their third party exclusivity deals. Oh. Which is very funny. Yeah, that is very funny. Hopefully they do some sort of showcase since before we just see it all in court documents. <laughs> I'm going to love if this acquisition doesn't go through and Sony has only grown more bitter through the process of going through all this shit. And like we knew at the beginning of the gen, every journalist was talking about it, that Sony was making the deals. Uh-huh. You know, they're coming to these people for exclusives. They're coming to these people for timed exclusive. They're funding these studios. They're making new studios. They're doing all this stuff. And and that wasn't them post-pissed from the lawsuit. Right. Post-pissed from the acquisition drama. I don't know what a Sony absolutely fucking scorned would do in a modern environment. I know what that looked like in the PS2 era, and I still miss Lick Sang. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, between the FTC uh, suing Mm -hmm. and um, the UK CMA thing, I still think this is the least likely to go through it's ever been. And I think a lot of people can read the tea leaves on this one. Yeah, and it's like, I feel like at some point the EU is going to realize there's no amount of like documents you can get them signing for 10 year exclusivity or non-exclusivity deals Mm -hmm. that actually make a difference in this. But who knows? I mean, I mean, like... I mean, if they get if they sign a contract that Microsoft has to give them ten Call of Duties with feature parity and everything to the other versions, that's good enough because Microsoft won't be in the video game market ten years from now. <laughs> like uh, they they're the ones that put out the look how small our penis is. If you actually look up numbers, we're admitting we've sold less than ten million series so far. I think the numbers came out to eighteen mil for Series S and X, didn't it? 
I thought that was the number. That's not what they fucking showed. They showed that graph where it's like we have 20% compared to Sony's oh, 80. We got numbers since then, I'm pretty sure. I oh, saw did those we? floating around. I I thought I saw that in the last week, but you know, I didn't write down like bring up numbers because maybe, I'm not maybe a they're sicko doing anymore. maybe they're doing some fucking asinine thing where it's like, well, only only the Series X is competing with PlayStation 5. <laughs> Because then um, the numbers would make sense to what the graph they showed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, we should move on to the final. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, Yuji Naka basically said, yeah, I did it. I, I, I insider traded. I, I saw what was coming out and then bought, you know, a million and a half dollars of uh, stock. Can I go home now? <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> <laughs> it's it's great because we have like four years of podcasting with uh, like the, the network and chris so many times has said did you know that a lot of people admit to being guilty of a thing because they're stupid enough to believe they could just go home if they tell them what they did yeah <laughs> it was yuji naka all along <laughs> Okay. Do you? What is he going? <laughs> He's going to go to jail. Or what? <laughs> is there some <laughs> a mystery here? I don't know if he'll actually go to jail because uh, Japan does not have a um pun, especially punitive justice system, especially compared to the United States. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, a million and a half is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, and given that a lot of the corruption in the 90s bubble happened to the fiscal sector, you would think they would have stricter laws based on that, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know Japanese law. Mm. Uh, there's a giant shame culture over there, so there's a chance this man never gets a, a working day ever again. Yeah. Except for employing himself, you know? Maybe he's going to make his mobile division, he's going to try to get some money, and level five will somehow end up getting him in the I feel hell like chamber level, too. Level five will, doesn't want to be associated with No, him. probably not. KG <laughs> I, I ex- never did I, anything that I, bad. I, no. I, ex- I expect that uh, within a year, we're going to find out that KG Inafune quietly left level five. Or they're going to announce Mighty number 10. <sighs> yeah, I know. And I don't like that split. <laughs> it's like either Dan this time machine will take you back and you will kill baby Hitler or it will blow up and kill you <laughs> no, or you'll become Hitler <laughs> oh no yeah that's terrible there must always be a Hitler, a Hitler. <laughs> all timelines hinge on this one point Troy Baker yeah, you go back in time COVID. to kill baby Hitler uh-huh. you go back in time to kill baby Hitler you, you miss with your shot. A, a concrete gargoyle falls off a roof and hits you in the head. You get all disoriented and stumble into a World War Run recruiting office. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, you know, we spin me around in front of a green screen and my mustache starts shrinking into a block. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for Big Think. Yep. That's it. No more breaking news. No All right. Breaking. We're we're good. Okay. Somebody pointed oh, out Microsoft's doing a big show next. Uh, not Microsoft. Uh, Capcom's Capcom. doing a show next week when we start Big Thing to mention. Awesome. Uh, it'll probably drop that Resident Evil Four special demo. If Ooh, you think about it, it might, they got yeah. they got to drop that thing before the game comes out. It comes out later this month. Seems like a pretty good time to do the stealth drop. Is it going to only be RE Four stuff, or do we know? There will also be Mega Man Battle Network stuff. Oh, great. There's this collection. We know. Right. <laughs> These games are very old by now. This is not going to shock me. Just release it, please. Maybe uh, they'll maybe they'll announce some new new Mega Man project too, cuz I'm sure this has to be out soon. Maybe they'll tell us what Pragmata is. <laughs> no, that won't happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It just becomes the steamed I'm... hand things of it's in the next room. Can I see it? No. No. <laughs> so so Sony will show it to us in six months. 
No, that's not radio interference. That's Pragmata. <laughs> no, I've seen Pragmata. It doesn't look like this. <laughs> um, so, tomorrow... <laughs> I actually, I didn't prepare to flashbang the audience with this, so I will go, hey, Chris, what are, what are, what are you doing in the next week? Uh, I'm going to start Saints Row 1, probably not on Saturday, though, since since uh, I, I have to spend my birthday watching Biodome. I'm act, <laughs> actually have my birthday on Saturday. <laughs> Cattle rods just prodding him, get in there, fucking watch Biodome, this is your fault. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll start Saints Row 1. I expect that to take the longest of any of the five games because that is a very early 7th gen game. I expect to go, we didn't make a whole lot. Here's filler. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see that as their first, like, trying to be GTA game. Make a mistake like that. Because it also has the thing that Saints Row 2 had where you need respect to play missions. I expect those uh, side activities to not be nearly as fun were easy to get through as they were in later games. But it also seems like it tries the hardest with its story because it has uh, Keith David and, and Michael Clark Duncan in it. Mm. Yeah. And, and there's like, there's, there seems to be like actual, we wrote something and learn and know anything about how these like gangs function because the whole conceit of the game is one of the gangs formed to fight this like cartel that was causing trouble all over the city. And then when that got resolved, they didn't disband. They just became the new power structure. And I'm like, that's so thoughtful as opposed to anything else in any of these games. (laughs) So I'm excited to play it from that angle. Uh, In the next week, this Friday, Bob and I are playing SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake with Eric, as Ooh. me and Bob try to explain all of SpongeBob to Bob, who's never watched SpongeBob. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's never seen SpongeBob, except for we showed him three he, episodes. Yeah, three episodes. Which were, of course, the great ones, like the. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the other ones. So we're going to have to explain what's up with that while me and Eric explore this brand new asterisk uh, SpongeBob game we've never played before. <laughs> and so that should be an interesting time tomorrow. Uh, next Friday, we have something very, very special planned, but we can't talk about that yet. Sunday, we will possibly be playing the greatest Horizon game. <laughs> Horizon Call of the Mountain. A game where you you can do really cool stuff in VR and explore and uh, play a tambourine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool stuff in that game. You can do one-handed pull-ups. It's great. That's true. I climbed a whole fucking mountain cliff with one arm. And it was awesome. <laughs> so, you can huck pottery off of cliffs. <laughs> and listen to it shatter at the bottom and go, is that, is that the Carlo Nascar? Is that the sound? <laughs> uh... <laughs> you see that mountain you can call it. Exactly. And that'll be this Sunday. Uh, but aside from those two streams, I think that's that's it from us until next Friday's very, very special stream, which we're not announcing yet. Right. Um, <laughs> Dr. Agro, do you have anything going on in the next week? Uh, I, I intend to solve a slight equipment malfunction for the motherland. Ooh. I'm just going to go ahead and put him in there, too. No. He can he can join them. This is going to be Bob post-stream. <laughs> like, now I know about SpongeBob. <laughs> I was deeply moved by SpongeBob, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's going to do it. See you all next week. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of Big Think to Mention. Big Think to Mention is only possible because of gamers like you listening to our podcast, commenting on our podcast, liking our podcast on various platforms. Thank you very much. 
everyone listening and please go to patreon.com slash gbpodcast to get more content and support the channel going forward.